to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Megalodon. Hey, hey, it fit. <laughs> Oh, welcome yeah. into the show. When things just syllabically fit, it brings me great joy. The Megalodon episode for 2020. What can go wrong? Hours and hours of fantasy football content. Andy, Mike, and Jason. The fantasy footballers back with you. November 25th. It's almost Turkey Day. Almost. And we've got a doozy of a show for you. And this is uh, a bit of a, I mean, this is a yearly event, what's taking place today. Oh, man. People, uh, I, I mean, you know, you're listening. You've been waiting for weeks. You uh, rose early this morning. You probably had a hard time sleeping last night knowing <laughs> what today was, the Megalodon episode. It is finally here uh, for your listening pleasure. And uh, it will. I'm guessing it will get to you in about... 20 hours from right this second where we're recording because that's how long the show is going to be. Yeah, when we do this show, what our hope is is that the producers can get it out by the following Thanksgiving. This show was actually from last year. That's correct. And um, But our you know powers of prognostication, we know exactly what's going to happen in the future, and that's why you're supposed to listen to everything we say. That's right. Verbatim. Uh, very little on the show today. All we have is taking it up to 100, some news and notes, buy, sell, all of our Turkey Day awards, the entire fantasy forecast with 16 matchups, starts of the week, the boom, boom, kicker, uh, and prop it like it's hot. But that's it. That's all we have. That's I, it? I think I can add something special in there somewhere along the way. You, you be- <laughs> You're just going to improv a segment? I'm going to improv a segment. We'll do it. I thought you meant like vocabulary-wise. You oh, would introduce I- some new words to the English Language. Oh, no doubt. That's yeah, going to happen. I, I, will, uh, I will be brought in the heat. <laughs> yeah, more, sure. more substandard words. You already brought in the heat. <laughs> That's the, I mean. All right. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. I hope you all are preparing for a very safe and happy and healthy holiday. Yeah, stay safe. And uh, we have a jam-packed show that we're going to get into right now. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballers. We called Google. We asked them to kind of expand the upload capacity for YouTube as a whole. So mm-hmm. we're going to get this whole show up there, uh, which will be uh, fabulous, just outstanding. And then uh, we have show 1,000. Oh, brother. Right around the corner. What? Wow. Two weeks from today, the show 1,000. <clears throat> from what what we hear, there is some special stuff happening behind the scenes that we don't even know about. So I'm I'm already staying tuned for uh, the show two weeks from now. <laughs> you're you're gonna be. <laughs> I'm gonna be. I'm gonna listen to it. Okay, and and I as long as the plans that you producers are figuring out and the team is figuring out don't involve like Snakes. another megalodon. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, it, the length of show doesn't have to expand with a thousand, right, Brooks? We'll see what happens. Oh, great. All right, we're here for the people. <laughs> That's true. That is true. And this show is as long as it is because we want you ready for week 12. We want you getting into your fantasy playoffs and bringing home that hashtag Foot Clan Just title. Just imagine when your family is gathered around and all the football games are on, how smart you're about to sound. Mm. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, that's a good point. Yes. Let's take it to 100. Taking it up to 100. Presented by Head and Shoulders, available at Walmart. All right, last week, two for three, right here on the yeah. show. Mike Davis uh, was my pick. He he was a hit. Jason, big hit. Brandon Cooks. Yeah, he got it done. They locked down Will Fuller for the most part. But this week is a new week, and we're going three for three. Oh. I'm going to kick it off with uh, a guy that I believe should be a rookie sensation at wide receiver. And, of course, there's about ten names that come to mind when you think about rookie sensations. This isn't one of them. Jalen Rager has so far not hit. He has not really done anything that's wowed us. But he got 93% of the snaps last week. He He's back to full health now. He's been above a 15% target share. And, of course, the reason he's taking it to 100 
is the Seattle secondary. Yes. Who takes it to zero. <laughs> so It's actually oh. a tertiary out there in Seattle. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's so, it's step down. I uh I think this is the week that Jalen Rager Wouldn't uh, that be up? No. No? Hmm. No. From two to three? Well, you think that makes it better? Google. I would tertiary. assume so. I would I would assume yeah, but that I mean, tertiary it, assumes that I get to play with more players. Well, I mean, but you got your primary and then you've got your secondary. So oh, I okay. It's a, I see. Okay. You see, it's a step yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, I, I see where you're going. Okay. Yeah. We were, we were just. It's always two... better when you examine the joke closely. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's dive deep. Really work through whether this is funny. Yeah. Or not. It could be. <laughs> it might be. I've I've had very mixed reviews on Rulio 11. I oh, mean, I'm I'm all in. Some on people Rulio are starting to really get on board. As long as you say it like you're in hook, then we're okay. I did see quite a bit. Did of, you? of those? Uh, yeah. Some that makes sense. Rufio. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go with the wide receiver as well. Darius Slayton taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. Look, it's been a while since we've had a top 24 performance from Darius Slayton. Been a while. It's been a while. Uh, he was the number 15 overall wide receiver in week five, but this is a matchup. We talked about Daniel Jones yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, should have a nice week. Slayton still very involved in this offense, so big play time taking it to 100. I love this pick. And I am going with a tertiary option myself. <laughs> Cole Beasley, wide receiver from the Buffalo Bills. The the matchup is is a plus one against the Los Angeles Chargers. So that's a, a in his favor. Beasley has gotten it done on quite a handful of games this year. Because when John Brown is hobbled, he takes a twenty five percent target share, and it looks like John Brown is hobbled. So you got matchup, you got opportunity. And Cole Beasley's a good wide receiver when the opportunity presents itself. He's a good wide receiver. He's the kind of wide receiver who, if you just put him into a machine and you made him like fifty percent larger, like how good would that player be? Oh, if you put, in the NFL, if you just if you were somehow able to do it, yeah. and, and run this in a machine, you know, yeah. run the algos, put Cole Beasley in place of Julian Edelman, put him in place of uh, uh, Wes Welker. Cole Beasley would be a uh, yeah. a national name. He's played very well this year and continues to be a go-to wide receiver. So that'll be a good one. Take your hair up to 100 with head and shoulders available at Walmart. <laughs> Mike Mike just did a hair flick yeah. and I am I am uncomfortable. <laughs> I am that uh that uh, hair, that hair flick is very unlimited. Yes. Yeah, that's something Russ. You're would, welcome you Russ would do that. Pick yours up today. Check out next Tuesday's episode. We'll reflect on her up to 100. I cracked my neck when I got <laughs> <You're that. laughs> We've got our first Megalodon injury. Oh, my. I cracked my neck on a hair flip. It's time for news. News and notes from around the league. Did you did, – Jason was cracking his neck during that drop. Were I, you preparing were you for a hair, hair flip? I, I you wanted to be all, ready? I, I cannot perform the hair flick. You um, can try. Come on. <laughs> Uh, but no, uh, I I was jealous of his neck cracking, and I, okay. I got in a quick neck crack. All right, uh, what's going on today in the world of COVID? That's what we want to know. Mm -hmm. uh, Jacksonville, their entire defensive coaching staff sent home following a positive test. So there you go. Uh, the Minnesota Vikings have a situation with Adam Thielen. He tested positive, and then he tested negative. So I mean that that's at least a positive sign I would think for Adam Thielen's availability because if he he'll continue to be tested and if he keeps coming up negative then he's in he'll play on Sunday yeah so I think he has to just get some more negatives in a row mm -hmm. you got to get a hot streak of, of negatives to be yes. in the game yes uh Teddy Bridgewater Christian McCaffrey both practicing this week that's in some capacity yep that's uh, that's a great sign I, I think Bridgewater I mean, we'll just have to wait and see. I I still do not expect Christian McCaffrey to suit up, but this if he's practicing now and then there's a bye week, there should be no worry about him in week 14 if, if that's the first game he's back. Yeah, and uh, it would be nice if Teddy Bridgewater was back, uh, although P.J. Walker was good. You know, for Robbie Anderson, for D.J. Moore and company, taking on Minnesota, it's a good matchup. Could you imagine how good P.J. Walker would have been for fantasy? If both times that he drove down and got all the way to the goal line, he didn't throw an interception in the end zone. Like, yeah, if he that's a very those, fair point. Yeah, I mean that that's negative four points as opposed to po plus twelve. I mean mm -hmm. he he played very well outside of obvious horrible interceptions in the end zone, which you 
you should hold it against them. But. Yeah, yeah, they were and they were ugly. Yeah. They weren't like some uh, oh little tip pass, nothing, no big deal. No, it's like I, I'm targeting my opponent. Uh, Chris Carson practiced on Tuesday on track to play Monday night. This is great. I mean, for fantasy football players, seeing him practice. This could have been a nightmare scenario with the Monday night game is all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And instead, we see him practicing, and he's going to be back out there. Here are a couple more running backs uh, going to return from injured reserve. Raheem Mostert, Jeff Wilson. So uh, Tevin Coleman could also be back. Yeah, with, with regards to Mostert and Wilson, uh, they have their 21-day window. They are able to practice. It's not a guarantee that they will be activated for the game. But obviously, this is the first step. They can't be activated for the game until this happens. So uh, you you might have them back this week. Austin Eckler, they plan to uh, oh, the Chargers baby. plan to designate him to return from injured reserve this week. It will open up the twenty one day window. Come on, awesome. I don't think he gets back this week. I don't either. But uh, he's on his way back, and so you could get one more Belage week yeah. before Eckler is back out there. I think you will, and I will one say this: one final stay. Uh, in the Bellagio? Yeah. Uh, roll them dice. Um, but uh, when Eckler comes back, th this because of this injury and the nature of it, I probably will – I mean, I almost certainly, I will not play him the first week back. You'll want to see it. I wouldn't imagine that they throw him right to the wolves. I'll, I'll bet they ease him in. All right. Uh, here are a couple of uh, news blurbs, headlines, that came across this morning. Brandon Allen – the Bengals, Brandon Allen, is going to start against the Giants. At what position, Andy? Quarterback. Okay. Tight end. No, <laughs> uh, quarterback. Uh, Brandon Allen, he he had some production for Denver. I think it's a much better scenario than Ryan Lindley. Finley. Or Finley. Finley Lindley. I, man, I keep mixing those guys yeah, up. Yeah, Ryan Finley. Yeah, I agree with that, but I'm I'm not – I don't agree with it enough to move the needle on whether I'm confident starting those options. That is fair. And then Jacksonville is going to uh, transition to Mike Glennon, which is a great thing for your organization to do. First start since 2017 for Mike Glennon, yes. who has the best job in football. And a, a shout out to this tweet from Mark Long at AP Mark Long on Twitter. Here's the craziest part. Mike Glennon got benched in 2017 for Chicago's Mitchell Trubisky, who got benched this year for Nick Foles, who got benched last year for Gardner Minshew, who got replaced by Jake Luton, who was now benched for Mike Glennon. And the, the <laughs> circle of and you, can just, you can just keep repeating that tweet over and over and over. It is, it's a delight. That tweet is – it just shows you very few people on earth can play quarterback. Yeah. At a high level. At it's an just, NFL level, yeah, 100%. It's incredible because these those players, all of them, are better than 99.99999% of the earth. How is it? And they stink. <laughs> I mean, it's like, how is it we don't have better, more better quarterbacks? Like, I think we're getting there. I really think we're getting there. You look at the new influx of – uh, of, of you know young quarterbacks who are starting to set the world on fire. Deshaun Watson, Kyler Murray, Josh Allen. Carson uh, Wentz. Uh, I Patrick Mahomes. I, I think we're going to have more influx of quality quarterback play. That's what I hope, at least. Uh, sure, sure. I, I, it's, it's tough. It's tough to play quarterback. It's tough to, uh, I, it's tough to be. It, it's two things. It's, you you got to be good. Then you have to have good coaches, and you have to land on the right team. And there's a lot of things that go into it, or your just career dissolves. Saying like, how many rocket scientists are in the world? More than quarterbacks. Yeah, and it's like I would think being a rocket scientist would be way harder than being very a quarterback. Very easy. Very easy. <laughs> That's I I can assume that now. You can do six weeks online university, rocket scientist, <laughs> bing bang boom. All right, a reminder to drop it like it's hot. Your waivers went through today. Check and see who was dropped by your league mates. Let's do some buy sell. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, Jason and I went two for three last week. Mike, a, p a pitiful, pathetic one for three. Oh, <laughs> what a loser. I know. Uh, we had Mike Davis, top 11 running back. He ended up there. Michael Thomas, I sold him as a top 11 wide receiver. And then Tom Brady as a top 11 quarterback. Nine you guys for both 104. Sold him. Doesn't get in the top 11. Sorry. Sorry. All right, Week 12 Megalodon Edition. 
I guess we're going with uh, Chark Week here. Is that the that's the tie-in? Mm. Is DJ Chark with the newly anointed Mike Glennon a top twenty-four wide receiver this week against Cleveland? I have two words: fat chance. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna sell it. I I'm not. I I was out on Chark last week. You are playing the uh, the gamble on, I... on a big play now. Miles Garrett will not uh, be available. Mm -hmm. Also, Denzel Ward, the main yep. cornerback who would be the worry, now has a calf problem, will be missing multiple weeks. Does yeah. that sway you for a top 24 from a really athletic guy who's going to be getting the targets? No. No, it doesn't. And Cleveland was just fine rushing the passer last week without Miles Garrett. They they put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. You are betting on Glennon. I'm not going to do it. He may find... Uh, Options closer to the line of scrimmage that he prefers. So I think you get more of the same from DJ Chark. So I'm going to sell. You guys can buy. It's your choice. Okay. Well, uh, Mike, where where are you at? If you I, both sell, I'll kill you. <laughs> well, if he sells, I'm going to change the line. But where yeah, are you at, Mike? I'm going to sell. 24 is too high. I, I have him ranked well outside of that right now. All right. I'm going all the way to 36. Are you in, Andy, at 36? Oh, I will buy a top 36. Yeah, I would buy at 36. All right. 30. Top okay. thirty, uh, I will. I'll buy it. Man, I'm, okay. So what's where the, where's the line? Twenty. He's gonna <laughs> thirty on the dot is probably where I think he is there. Twenty nine. No, <laughs> sure, I'll sell twenty nine. All right, wow, all right, we did it. All right, we did it. All right, I'm buying twenty nine. I'll I think buy twenty nine. Denzel Ward being gone and has really improved your odds to win this one. <laughs> he is the number one target. We got a few more uh, spots he can land in. I I would prefer to look. <laughs> How elsewhere. did you not pick top twenty nine here, Brooks? That's yeah. what I want to know. What were you thinking? I guess I wasn't. <laughs> All right, uh, Aaron Rodgers against Chicago. Is he a top eight quarterback this mm. week? He only has two games outside that uh, top eight this whole season. Chicago, great defense, but he's been a quarterback eight or better for five straight weeks. Something's got to give. Yeah, and so one of those games was against Tampa Bay in week six. That was the infamous Green Bay collapse where everyone proclaimed that Tampa Bay was going directly to the Super Bowl. The other was week two, which is weird because it was against the Detroit Lions. I mean, I guess maybe that was just one of those divisional things uh, he I, was still 240 for two in that game. It was Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones ran for mm. 700 yards and 18 touchdowns. So Aaron Rodgers was, you know, taken away from fantasy value there. Yeah, and I mean, weird for this year, but not for last year when it was, you know, 10 times outside of that range and he wasn't yeah, that well, good. I'm, so, I'm saying weird in the matchup. Against, yeah. The Detroit Lions are not a scary <laughs> matchup for a quarterback. I'm buying. I'll, I'll take him in the top eight. I'm going to sell. Uh, I'm going to sell for, for two reasons. One, I, I really believe – I mean, nobody's getting it done against Chicago. This is a very difficult divisional matchup. But then you you also have to factor in the fact that there's no bye weeks this week. So, you know, top eight, you, you've you you've got 32 that is quarterbacks. A good point. And um, I think Taysom Hill is someone that I would sneak into that top eight because of his rushing ability. So I'm, I'm going to take him just outside. I've got him at 10. I think you can start him. Um, but I, I will sell on the top eight line. I have him at eight on the dot, and, oh. I, and I think he gets there. Um, touchdowns. I mean, it, that's all it's going to take. He's going to throw at least two in this game against Chicago, and I think he can get up into that top eight, so I'm with Mike. And then the last buy sell here for the Megalodon edition, Clyde Edwards-Lair, 80 total yards against Tampa Bay. What do you Ooh. think? Uh, he's hit the mark five out of ten games this year. I'm going to sell. Uh, I think he has been doing the vast majority of his work on the ground, and Tampa Bay's r rush defense is phenomenal. That will slow him down, and I, I don't think he gets to 80 total. Mike? So it, it was nice to see his running back share. His his rush share had jumped. You know, with, When Le'Veon Bell showed up, we were seeing 47%, 32%, but it has jumped up the last couple games, 56%, 67%. So he has... Working his way back to being the 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 uh, for sure the primary running back in the Kansas City offense, eighty total yards is that what it is? Yeah. Uh, I th man, I'm selling. If it makes any difference, I'm going to sell it. He's All averaging right. fifty total yards per game over the last four games. Yeah, but but I mean, he had sixty nine rushing yards and eight receiving yards. We got to 
Get get Clyde some targets, man. What is going on over there? I'll I'll buy then. Okay. I I, th I think this is a, a situation we've seen plenty of times in the past where the rookie is just because he's a rookie and he's still coming along. He's not utilized as much in the third down roll and the two minute drill and the passing game. Next year, I expect Clyde to to really take that part of the roll over. I don't think it happens this season. All right, that was Buy Yourself from Pristine Auction. PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Get a $10 credit. All right, it's time for some uh, very special holiday-themed content. <laughs> the finish there, too. Uh, now, do you like Thanksgiving after hearing that, Mike? Uh, I, not only have I heard that, I, I, I made that. I know. I no. know you did. Uh, against like, your was it against your will? I mean, no, no. Look, I'm turkey in the straw. I can get down with that. Okay, all right. Time for some Turkey Day awards. We do this every year. I don't. Yeah, I think in previous years I've looked at the answers before you guys. Mm. I have not this year. Oh, you're part of the game. I'm part of the game. <sighs> and uh, we'll start with uh, what? What do we got? Five awards, Brooks. Yes, sir. And who picked these out? Was this you and Kyle? Kyle, he always comes up with these awards. I picked the winners this year. Oh, did you? Oh. See. oh. So this this first one is uh, titled Tiffany's Mashed Potatoes, which is uh, Jason's wife uh, who makes some very delicious mashed potatoes that are described as a lumpy, buttery glob of mashed potatoes that is what everyone needs to add uh, some body to their plate. It's as dependable as they get, and we all know butter makes everything better so who is the Tiffany's mashed potatoes this year? I don't Ooh. appreciate that description. They're not <laughs> lumpy. They're, I was going to ask, are you a smooth no, or a lumpy? So it, they're, they're smooth. They've got cheese and sour cream and stuff mixed in. It, well, let's oh, just fantastic. focus on the dependable word. Sure. Then. Yeah, who's, they're very dependable. Who's the dependable one? I, can I go first? Yeah, uh, you, you may. Travis Kelsey. I mean, look, mm. if you're talking big and buttery, taking mm. up a lot of room, Who's just as dependable as it comes in your, you know, in your uh, lineup? Uh, that would be who I would give the award to. Would be Travis Kelsey. Mm, you're forgetting about the Denver game. <laughs> oh, oh, there was one game. Yeah, that's <laughs> in one the game? snow. Yeah, I'm going with Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray, who has not had a single bad game at the quarterback position. When he's bad, he's the 11th ranked fantasy quarterback on the Man. week, and he has been crushing. Kyler's who came to mind right away with the consistency factor. How about Alvin Kamara? Ooh, I don't know. All right, the winner, <laughs> the winner was Kyler Murray. Boom. Yeah. Okay. All uh, right. that, that, other candidates could have been Derrick Henry, Travis Kelsey. Uh, so yeah, we were right on. Yeah, it could have been, except for that Denver game. <laughs> Look, I don't <laughs> yeah. know about you Trade guys. Trade him. <laughs> so, cut him. I, I think, I think here's the issue. Okay, when I put mashed potatoes on my plate, mm -hmm. is it big or is it small? I'm gonna guess big. Is it Travis Kelsey or is it Kyler? Hmm? Oh, I see. Kyler can't be mashed potatoes. Being a sizeist over Kyler's, here. Kyler's a delicious deviled egg. <laughs> <laughs> they're so good. They're an important part, but they're not that big. Yeah, but how many deviled eggs do you eat? 32. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. The second award is the burn dinner roll. Uh, it's described as, gosh, you put so much time and effort into preparing the meal, but unexpectedly the rolls were burned. Oh, no. So this is about disappointment. Sometimes... You just have to scrape the carbon shavings off and throw it away in sadness. I mean, the oh. burnt dinner roll. If you I mean, have to throw it away. Oh, goodness. That's got to be Hollywood Brown. I mean, it really oh, does. Yeah. I okay. Mean, <laughs> that's a trifecta. We're that's all fully in. unedible, though. You can't scrape those shavings off and still uh, salvage it. No. no that's that's uh, Look, a lot of work went into this. They, I mean, <laughs> dinner rolls are delicious. They were hyped so, up beforehand. They're so yeah. good. They're like my favorite thing. But if you burn them. You can't use him, and if there's nobody passing the ball in the in the, for their team, he can't catch it. So I'm I'm certain. I mean, that has to be the burn dinner roll. That has. I'm I'm gonna go Hollywood as well. Yeah, all right. I'm, I'm in. Who all right. It? The uh, oh, it was. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was Hollywood Brown. Other candidates. Uh, DJ Chark. Yeah, I guess you know. It, you yeah. take the blame yeah, away, yeah, but yeah. when you look at the player by himself, that would be part of it. Lamar Jackson. Sure. Oh, sure. Yeah, I mean, same team. I, I wondered, like, <laughs> Christian McCaffrey, does he apply? Because it's like, oh, it's so no. good. Oh, it's burnt. I got to take this off, put it back in the – yeah. But, no. I, I was thinking Michael Thomas, but 
then we got to the but you're not throwing away Michael Thomas. No. No. Okay, sweet potato casserole. This is a Gross. heavy, hearty, delicious uh, treat for the first few bites. And then uh, you can only have so much of it before it makes you vomit all over the floor <laughs> and completely ruins your Thanksgiving and your family calls you a uh, no-good has-been. Oh. By the way, the first few bites of the sweet potato casserole, now is that the same as like the, the like marshmallow yam situation? Yeah, I think it's the same Because whenever I get those, I do. I eat the marshmallow part, and then I'm like, eh, I don't really want to eat all the rest because it's not as good. Uh, but what is the what is the uh, connection here? You can only have so much. So I think this is like a hot start, but then they have they. I mean, Robbie got, Anderson. You got tricked. Robbie oh, Anderson is a, a sweet potato a casserole. Yeah, that, you might that's be getting tricked. I, I, I would now uh, again. This is more injury, but that's that's part of the problem. I would say Raheem Mostert fits. Mm, he's like, okay. oh, he's good. It's really good, but just for a little bit, and then you and then you got to take a break. Because he's he's what? gone. Oh man, those yeah, I mean, are here's both the, really here's good. The, I know I'm wrong because uh, even though they hid the answers from me, I can see the amount of space, and uh, <laughs> Robbie Anderson doesn't fit in this amount of space. <laughs> okay, so you can take another shot. I may have abbreviated something. All right, oh, all right, so Robbie you A. <laughs> you don't want me to give up, is what you're saying, um, Mike? Do you uh, you have any other names coming to mind? I mean, the, the first name that. Hot, oh. st hot start, big fart later on? That, the, per the, the name that came to me was Alan Robinson. What about Tyler Lockett? I'm changing my answer. Oh, that's a good one. I'm changing but my he's, answer. He's kind of... All right, Jay, what's your answer? I'm going Naeem Hines. He was the waiver wire pickup okay. in week okay. one. Everyone spent all the yeah, money on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was a big disappointment. You know, later on, it's like, oh, another good game. You have another bite, and you're like, this is good. And then as you take a second bite, you go, no, wait, this is sweet potatoes. They're gross. I'm in. I'm straight right. on Hines. So I, I'll go Jonathan Taylor. Okay. <laughs> okay. First few bites seem like we're on to something. Then right. we weren't. All right. The answer is, oh, come on. It's Robbie Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> it is Robbie A. Yes. <laughs> Why did I change? Wait a minute. It's Robbie A? He yes. wrote Robbie A. No, I was joking because that would be so silly. Oh. Wow. You're other, a bunch other, of silly boys. Oh. Also, Andy, you did not get it correct. I know. Uh, Daryl Henderson, oh, Jarek McKinnon, McKinnon, also candidates. Jarek McKinnon, that's a good one. Yeah, I know. Robbie Anderson, Brooks is bringing up, past six games outside the top 30, it's a problem. But it's it's like the kind of problem that you don't understand because he's getting – I mean, we're going to talk about him later. Yeah. He's getting a ton of targets. He hasn't been crushing you. That That's the one nice thing. He's, no. He's been getting he's been eight, letting you nine, down 10 softly. points. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, paper cuts. All right, this is the Mike Wright Special Award, which is, uh, you know, if you don't know – Mike doesn't participate in the traditional uh, Thanksgiving feast as so much, much as possible. He participates in the going to Jack in the Box feast. That is correct. Uh, the random dish that nobody, or that somebody brought because well they're convinced Thanksgiving food is trash, outdated. Mm. This is a time to stop the old way of thinking. Open yes. up your eyes, realize yes. that it could be the best thing ever. Um, I've got my answer. I've got mine. Well, go ahead. It, uh, mine is a Mike Wright special. I'm going with Antonio Gibson. Oh, okay. Antonio Gibson. I get that as new, but I feel like he was already, you know, people already knew it was yeah. good. Yeah, I'm going to go with Kareem Hunt. Change the old way of thinking. Secondary option as a running back one. I'm thinking more along the lines of, uh, I'm going James Robinson. You just, you, you. Okay. You know, okay. coming in, you didn't think he was anything special. He was this undrafted free agent. It's like, no. Jack in the Box is, is delicious. This is really good. <laughs> Just keep eating. Uh, I think we're going to triple whiff this. Let's see. The answer is uh, James Robinson. Oh, oh, yeah. It made sense once you gave your, other, your reasons. Other candidates, Chase Claypool. Oh, yeah. Mike Davis. Okay. Sure. Okay. Sure. That's I get that. All right. Last one before we start uh, the Thanksgiving Day matchups. This is the Thanksgiving Day turkey. This is the showstopper, the MVP of Thanksgiving Day. The MVP. This one's easy to me. It's Dalvin Cook. Yeah, I think Kyler is close in contention close, there. Close, yeah. Uh, but Dalvin makes the most sense at a, a fundamental position. What do you think, Jason? Yeah, I mean, hmm. So, it, Kyler, be, would, Kyler, would, have been, Kyler would have been who I, who I picked, but he's already been given an award. I don't think he would double yeah, down. I agree. So, now I'm wondering, could it be Travis Kelsey – but tight end isn't Could quite be. as important as running back. Oh, man. Uh, Andy, what's your answer? I agree with Mike, and I also cheated and looked at it. It's Dalvin Cook. Yeah. 
Then I have not answered yet. I also will go with Dalvin Cook. Yes. No, your timer ran out. Alvin Kamara, another candidate there for sure. So, uh, do we have a? Do we don't have like a special drop Brooks for like these Thanksgiving Day matchups? I mean, you could hit the Turkey Day one again. <laughs> yeah, I think we should. It seems like the right thing to do. <laughs> The fact that there is no, I mean, there's no, there are no words. So it could really represent any segment we want. It could be the only drop we have. Yeah. All right. Thanksgiving Day, we have three games. Uh, A reminder, returning from the bye this uh, week, the Bills, Bears, Giants, and 49ers. There are no buys this week at all. Also, if if you happen to make it through this podcast with time left, maybe you're traveling, um, we, there is a special DFS pod just for the uh, yes. Turkey Day games. If you're playing DFS, you can listen uh, to the Fantasy Footballers DFS pod. That is true, Jason. Thank you for highlighting it. Uh, that show has been well received this year. It's been in awesome. spite of its hosts. Right, I couldn't believe it because those two guys are the worst. And maybe that's part of the intrigue of the show is you kind of are spending most of your time. Is Betts the worst or is, is Kyle the worst? Is yeah, I mean, so, Betts uh, the worst, is Kyle the worst? Really tough to figure out. I yeah. mean, they're both so terrible. Right. But definitely tune in. Uh, Terribly sure. great. Terribly great. <laughs> yeah. We love you guys. All right. Houston uh, at 3-7 and seven, taking on the Detroit Lions, who always play on Thanksgiving. Texans are three-point favorites. It's a 51-point over-under. Okay. Mm-hmm. Romeo Cornell has uh, been been good news for Deshaun Watson since uh, Bill O'Brien left. He's averaging 35 rushing yards per game. Got his first rushing touchdown last week. He's been a, a great performer for fantasy football purposes, which based on that way the year started. Uh, this this would be the inverse of the, the bad rolls that eventually you burnt. This is like they look bad, but then you're like, oh, wait, no, that's really good. Like mm-hmm. you thought you weren't going to get to enjoy but Watson is an every week star, right? So he, he's correct. out there against Detroit. Mm-hmm. I, I I wanted to make him my start of the week again, um, but I felt like it was it's just too obvious because if you have Deshaun Watson, how in the world would you play someone else? I agree, and yeah, that would even extend to somebody new to the scene like Taysom Hill, right? You're playing Deshaun Watson oh, over Taysom for Hill. sure. Uh, these are a couple of terrible or terrible if it's you're terrible. Charles Barkley uh, run defenses. Houston's allowing the most rushing yards per game. That's nice. And then Detroit's allowing the most fantasy points per game to the running back position, the most rushing touchdowns. And here you are with two situations. Yeah. That it, it's like talent versus opportunity, and this, there's not a lot of talent to go around right now. This is a – hopefully not, but it feels like this is the trap. The giant piece of cheese is there. But you could see the box is being held up by the stick, and someone's just waiting to yank that string as yeah. I go for the piece of cheese. Now, for Deon- let's, DeAndre Swift was out last week. Uh, the rookie running back for the Detroit Lions was out last week with the concussion. He is uh, participating in limited practice, at least on Tuesday. We don't know if that means that he will clear the concussion protocol and play. If he plays, he's in. Swift is a smash play yet again. But are we going to go back to uh, trying to guess between Adrian Peterson, on Johnson? Neither of them came through, and it was a really plus matchup for the running backs for Detroit last week. You you can you can put on out there in desperation mode if, if over Swift, Peterson if Swift misses. Yeah, over Peterson. And uh, it's you know it's enticing when you when you're looking at your waiver wire and you're saying, oh, I need a a desperation start at running back, and Houston's so bad. But it, I don't want to play any of these players if DeAndre Swift isn't out there. I don't want to play Duke Johnson. I he, mean, he would be the only player that I would. I wouldn't. I wouldn't dabble with Carry On anymore. I, you know, compete, watching both of them are competing for five points. Watching the game last week, there, there was just you know he's gone to play video games and given up his NFL dream. Um, I, but Duke Johnson. I think that could be the trap. That could definitely be the trap because, you know, the last six weeks, they're, the, the, you know, Detroit is as bad as it gets. They're the worst in the league of fantasy points given up to the running back position. And Duke Johnson, you know, has Deshaun Watson who doesn't really target the running back, which is kind of his deal. That being said, 
you know, what we saw last week was against New England, um, and th that was that was a much more difficult matchup than this. Uh, two weeks prior to that, Duke Johnson against Jacksonville was a top 10 running back. So I don't think it's out of the question that you could start Duke Johnson. It could be a trap, but I'd be willing to do it personally. Because I think Duke Johnson himself is talented. Oh, and gosh, if, no. if they get up in the game, they can hand him the ball. Like last week, he only had 10 carries. Uh, you know, the, the two weeks prior was 16 carries and 14 carries. They, they don't get up in games. Well, the Lions I, I might have something to say about well, that. Well, I know the Lions didn't score last week, but Matthew Stafford, this is a, on paper, this is a good matchup for Matthew Stafford. He should be able to take advantage of this. Mm -hmm. He had been on a hot streak of games uh, where he was performing, had a long touchdown called back last week. I just, uh, I we're different on this one. I don't have any confidence that, that Duke Johnson can perform for my team. Uh, Will Fuller. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Brandon Cooks. Yep. Sure. Absolutely. Otherwise, that's where it ends. Uh, I don't know if Randall Cobb went on IR, but that was a possibility. Or was it? Oh. Stills is hurt too, I think. Oh, Kiki QT. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> oh. He's back, baby. Yeah. Uh, Marvin Jones. Yeah, I, I think you play Marvin Jones. And uh, we don't think Amendola will be back out there. So I think it's Marvin Jones and nobody else. And Hawkinson. Yeah. Yep. And Hawkinson. And that's it for that matchup. Sure. Uh, the Washington football team taking on the Dallas Cowboys. Both teams 3-7 and seven in a battle for the NFC East. I mean, look, if the Eagles lose, this could be a battle for the division lead. Oh, that, that, that juicy so four ridiculous. wins. Yeah, it is ridiculous. But uh, I think we can all agree. Go football team. Sure. Uh, Cowboys, well, not Brooks. Oh, Brooks, Brooks doesn't agree so with that. Sad back Do you there. even want this? Do you want the title of the worst first? Heck yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I would I would it. too, yeah. <laughs> Cowboys, three-point favorites. It's a 46-point over-under. And this is a Alex Smith v. Andy Dalton. Just what we all expected. It's 2016. <laughs> yeah. And that's totally fine. Uh, this is a rematch from week seven where Washington won 25-3. We did see signs of life last week from Dallas's offense. Mm -hmm. I have picked Washington in this game, however. The Washington defense, uh, second highest sack rate. That is going to be a problem for Andy Dalton. Some mistakes to be made. They did shake things up with the Dallas offensive line last week, and it seemed to have it, it paid some dividends. Sure. Yeah, I agree. But what do you do fantasy-wise in this game? Because despite the intrigue of division uh, battle, you have must-starts in Antonio Gibson and Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, Gibson at this point is an every-week uh, must-start. Mm -hmm. And Zeke had, a, had signs of life last week. So those guys are kind of locked in. But what do you do? J.D. McKissick snaps dropped quite a bit last week. We've, we've heard rumor of Gibson getting more and more playing time in the offense. It's the game script to me. I, I'm not at the point where I'm ready to say Antonio Gibson will out-snap J.D. McKissick the rest of the way. I don't think that's going to happen. It's what do you believe about this game? Do you think that Dallas can get up on Washington? Washington's defense is very, very good. If if Dallas can get up, then you're going to see a lot of J.D. McKissick, and you'll see those targets return to closer <laughs> closer to the well, last couple of weeks than the previous. Yeah, game. last week when you when they played the Cincinnati Bengals and then lost Joe Burrow halfway through the game, that Washington defense just dominated. I mean, they, Cincinnati didn't score 10 points, so that wasn't where you needed the McKissick-style play. That was where you want to grind the clock. So it really is a matter of do you believe that Dallas can score on the Washington football team and you know have this be a game that hits the over, or do you think the the football team defense is going to uh, be what they've been the last several weeks and be a little bit too hard for Andy Dalton? And that's where that's what I believe. In which case, it shouldn't be a McKissick game. McKissick or Duke Johnson, Mike? Oh, in a, in a flex. Wow, half point. That's a great question. Duke, I oh. would as well. All right, Terry McLaurin, you always play him. What about yeah. this guy? <laughs> Uh, three games with Andy Dalton. Amari Cooper has been viable. Seven for 79 and a touchdown. Seven for 80. Six for 81. Yep. You play him. And, and I think you could play CeeDee Lamb. We saw the snaps go back up for him. He, I mean, it was a great matchup against Minnesota. Uh, but six targets, seven targets the previous game against Pittsburgh. I think that CeeDee Lamb is in play as a uh, like a wide receiver three. 
I, I thought I would be more enthusiastic about Lamb. I was looking at the prop bet for his uh, yardage totals, and I wasn't confident enough. He's not. He's got to score. I think that's what's got to happen. He has not been putting up big yardage numbers for a little while, but he certainly is a great player. He's probably the best wide receiver. Yeah, I, yeah. I think he is, and he'll take that uh, you know role at some point in the future, but I don't think it will be this week. Uh, I have a hard time trusting – this Dallas offense, the receivers, uh, Washington has just been so good against wide receivers. And if Dalton is getting pressure, if the if this defensive line is really trashing the 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 Cowboys, I, I mean, who, you know, I think this could be one of those games where nobody comes through. I, I that being said, I'm probably still starting uh, Cooper because the known volume of targets and if you're in any kind of PPR league even if he ends up with 60 yards he could have a fine game um, but I'll probably look elsewhere Dalton Schultz Logan Thomas is Dalton Schultz in play Jason nope Dalton Schultz or Logan Thomas pick one nope <laughs> um, uh, I look Kyle uh, our, our editor has a perfect comment in here these tight ends are basically the same they run a ton of routes and you're just hoping they catch a touchdown. If I had to say who's going to catch a touchdown, uh, I guess in this game I would pick Dalton Schultz. Yeah, he's in play. Uh, I'll give you a dollar if we don't have to talk about this game anymore. <laughs> I accept that dollar. All right. In the game that we hope happens on Thanksgiving Day, the Baltimore Ravens at 6-4 and four take on the Pittsburgh Steelers sitting at 10-0. and 0. Steelers are five-point home favorites. It's a 45-point over-under. Pittsburgh absolutely on fire this year. And uh, look, they're favored. It's a 45-point over-under that gives Baltimore 20 points. It's been a small pie for Baltimore in this offense. They could be without several players in this game. We know they're going to be without two of the running backs. The one that was best last week, J.K. Dobbins and Mark Ingram, will be out of this game. They have a number of other COVID positives. This game could be moved. But as of right now, it's still Thursday. I just think Baltimore has a lot uh, a lot of challenges in this game to give you fantasy production. Certainly. That being said, I think Gus Edwards will be the most added player this week in fantasy football on the waiver wire. And uh, he's going to have a lot of volume. And Mike, you brought up on the show yesterday the fact Pittsburgh... When they played these, when these two teams played earlier, when Pittsburgh won 28 24, it was competitive. It was week eight, and there was a lot of rushing yardage on the ground. So, mm -hmm. Gus, you know, he's a player you'd play over McKissick, over Duke, over yes. those guys. Yeah, the vo because the volume will be there. The volume will be there. They can run. Uh, I get it. Pittsburgh is a very scary defense, or they're a very scary defense against running backs in particular. But if goal line work plus volume means Gus Edwards will be running back too. Yeah, I uh, I think that Gus will will have a fine game. Uh, he's not involved in the passing game, so that gets a little bit scary. If none you think. of them are, uh, that's that's true because uh, Lamar doesn't really throw to the running back. In fact, Lamar doesn't throw to anybody outside of Mark Andrews. And I am benching Lamar Jackson this week. Wow, it's the first time you know in a year and a half that I've been able to say that and mean it. Where if I had him, I would be picking up a waiver option. Um, and and playing them over him, I would I would play uh, several waiver Send options. In the car. I would Send play in Derek the car. Carr. Absolutely, um, I would play Taysom Hill. I would, uh, you know, I would I would play a lot of those type of players. Look, last you got to stay water. You can't just be living off of last year's laurels. In 2019, uh, Lamar Jackson had 14 quarterback one weeks. Uh, that's tied for the most ever. This year he only has four. And none inside the top three. But if you look even last year, he was bad against Pittsburgh. This year, we've already seen a game. He had multiple interceptions and did not have a good fantasy day against Pittsburgh. There's just better options out there. I think Pittsburgh's going to get home um, and get to Lamar Jackson, and I don't I don't think it's going to go well. Yeah, there'll be turnovers. I mean, that's, that's something you have to factor into the stat line. Lamar will probably have two or three turnovers that could negatively impact his fantasy score. I'm with you on that. Uh, you might not have a better option, but if uh, there's a lot of players that have better matchups this week. Big Ben, though, against Baltimore. Baltimore could be a little depleted. We don't know. 25 implied points. 
He's been on fire, averaging 45 pass attempts per game over the last three weeks. Really seen nothing out of James Conner that, that, that makes you believe they can lean on him to move the offense. And he's got elite pass-catching options in Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool, Juju, who was limited, but they think he'll be back out there. Eric Ebron running a lot of routes. I think Big Ben is okay. Yeah, I, w- I would play Big Ben. But what I about these two ben guys' ben heads up? Jackson. Yeah. Mike, I, I what would, about you? Uh, I had to make the decision in our league of record. I had Big Ben uh, as my backup and Lamar Jackson. I had recently traded for him. I chose to let Big Ben go to the waiver wire, so I, I'm playing Lamar over Ben. And how much is your uh, fab claim today for <laughs> Big Ben? Uh, no claim. Okay. No All claim right. in. Um, yeah, I, I I think he's fine. James Conner can't move the ball, and and really this is a this is a worrisome week for James Conner because it's a short week. I could see them giving um, more carries to Benny Snell and Anthony McFarland. Um, so I, I'm I'm a little worried about Conner. Yeah, yeah. There's been some comments from uh, their offensive coordinator believing Benny Snell deserves more carries. We've seen McFarland show up, like you said. Hollywood, no, no. Other pass catching options that aren't named Mark Andrews? No. 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 Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool, the matchup on paper. I mean, the, the Ravens are good. Six against opposing fancy wide receivers. You're playing both guys. Yeah, absolutely. There's no chance that I'm uh, that I'm benching those. Two. Just the right game to just uh, move to a different option from Juju dealing with the ankle. I would because of the the injury. Yeah, and the matchup. Yeah, but but I'm saying if if the if if Juju were perfectly healthy, I think you could still play him as a higher end wide receiver three. Hope that he's the one that comes down with the touchdown. But uh, the combination of the things, I would be out. Just to highlight the Lamar decision for fantasy players, 12.2. That is the total amount of fantasy points given up per game by the Pittsburgh Steelers. That is not good. Um, now, I will say this. What do you put the percentage odds now that you know I've made the firm declaration that I'm benching Lamar Jackson? What do you put the odds that he scorches the earth and is the quarterback one now? Still very low. Okay. Very low. If, if you look back at not just the average that, uh, that Pittsburgh has allowed – they have given up one performance of top 15 fantasy points to a quarterback. Yeah, they they and Baltimore can't catch up. I mean, they're averaging, what, 180-something yards per game. They cannot come back in game. So if Pittsburgh gets out to a lead, which is likely in this one at home, it's yeah. troubling. I, I feel like when I'm watching Lamar, he... Which you've been doing a lot of lately. He is not getting it done in the, the rushing game. Like the thing that separates Lamar Jackson, his his X factor that unlocks his passing is his ability to run and he's still trying, but he's getting you know these 3 yards. Maybe he'll break off one decent sized run, but he's not he he is not hitting with any regularity of big chunk runs like where if you look at the success that Kyler is having it, multiple times a game there will be a chunk play where, where Kyler will pick it up. I don't know. He, he's if on he's pace for being... 920 rushing yards. Last season, he had 1,200. That's a, that's a big change. Right. I still was a little surprised it was 920 because you would have thought that baseline of games, those fantasy finishes would be higher than all of these middling teen uh, fantasy finishes. Well, one thing you have to keep in mind is how – incredibly inefficient he is at passing the football yeah I need to keep that in mind also the 1200 yards that he had last year was in 15 games because he his his actual pace would be almost 1300 yards okay so yeah, pre- pretty in- big difference per game passing and rushing yeah okay we're gonna uh break here because we've got a ton of matchups to get into and those were the Thursday Thanksgiving games so we're gonna k- give you our starts of the week first and reminder it's Thursday Take the mm. players out of your flex, put them in your running back, your wide receiver. This so, one is really important because there are multiple games. So important. And keep it in mind to to make pivots to that if that Baltimore-Pittsburgh game gets moved for some reason. Because I've yes. got Deontay Johnson in a couple places, and you need him in a flex so that way if that game gets canceled or something, you've got a little bit more opportunity to put somebody else into that spot. Let's do starts. Starts of the week. All right, why don't I kick it off today? I love why it. don't you? All right. Well, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it with the quarterback that was mentioned earlier this week. Yes. Derek 
Send in the car. Derek Carr is playing some good football. Yes. And I like both quarterbacks in this matchup. Jason is smirking. I'm not exactly sure why. I, I just love you. You're the one in charge of pushing the button, but it seemed like you cut yourself off with the sound drop. Oh. It made me giggle. Oh, I, I like the part where we all write our uh, starts of the week in the dock, and, you know, so we have our notes. We can sound intelligent. And Andy has written down Derek Carr versus Las Vegas. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> That's the difference, Mike. He is playing Atlanta. That is true. And uh, Atlanta, though, is playing who? Las, Las Vegas. Vegas. Yeah, oh, you're I darn see, right. That's right. They that's hundred percent right. I, see how I turned that around. <laughs> Derek Carr. This game's great. It's got a high over under. It's fifty five and a half points. <laughs> Ooh. Atlanta is um they're dead last against opposing fantasy quarterbacks, which is a great place to be if you're Derek Carr coming off the close loss. You saw that face he made on the sideline. Mm -hmm. That face said, "I'm going to score a lot of fantasy points for Andy as or, the starters of the week, or pick up my my new release for my emo band." That, that, that could Why have been what both? he said. Why yeah, not? It could both? be both. Yeah, they, the, Derek Carr always looks like he's got the the eyeliner, the, the raccoon does. eyes. Yeah. He does. It's very interesting. I think he. I mean, he has to put something on. I mean, I don't know. Is that natural? Is this another uh, Al Borland beard situation? <laughs> does he die? Do you think it's eyelashes? natural? <laughs> no. Uh, all right. Uh, I'm going to go with my quarterback because it's right across the field. It's he is playing Las Vegas. It's Matt Ryan who just had a putrid game. Now we have a rule. Matt Ryan without Julio. It's a Julio. It's a Julio <laughs> eleven. Matt Matt Ryan without Julio eleven. <laughs> Uh, you don't start, okay? You're going to pivot. But the reality is, last week, he finished the game with this hamstring issue. He's had it all year. He's been playing. And I, I Julio takes care of his body. He's doing the right things. I think he will be fine. I, I expect him to play. This is a matchup where y you want pieces because you've got two defenses that are giving up a lot of points and, and two offenses that, when healthy, are, are looking good. Matt Ryan still ranks third in NFL passing yards right now, and, and Vegas is allowing the fifth most passing yards and I know you're worried because last week it, you know he stunk and he had Julio for a chunk but keep in mind that was the Saints the Saints are playing unbelievable defense right now you know they they're the team that just destroyed Tom Brady for three interceptions and and you know nothing like he had one fantasy point and then remember the week after that Tom Brady went out and was the quarterback one mm -hmm. so don't be fooled by a bad performance against the Saints I think Matt Ryan is a is a good play in this game all right, my start of the week at the quarterback position is Booty Scoot and Cam Newton taking wow. on the Arizona Cardinals. Oh, yeah. Mm. I wasn't even ready for the button. Thank you, Al. Uh, just because I didn't imagine you'd make him a start of the week. Uh, I'm in on Cam Newton this week. It is the seventh best matchups for, for fantasy quarterbacks, and that is actually very generous. Uh, if you pull up our Stream Finder tool on the fantasyfootballers.com, you can see who they've played, what they have allowed, and – with this, they've had a pretty nice schedule when it when it comes to playing quarterbacks. The only actual like good quarterback that they have shut down is Matthew Stafford. Otherwise, the performances where quarterbacks didn't show up against the Cardinals, Garoppolo, uh, Week Two, Washington. Uh, was it still Haskins at that point? Uh, the Jets. So uh, Dallas yeah. when it was uh, a backup quarterback, Tua. Other than that, though. People are putting up big points on Arizona. I expect Cameron Newton to continue his booty scooting. Okay. I like it. Cream Hunt is my start of the week at the running back position, taking on Jacksonville. Jacksonville allowing the fourth most running back receptions per game. All right. And this backup, this second string running back, is on pace for 235 carries, 1,000 yards, and six touchdowns on the ground. Another 35 receptions, six touchdowns through the air. And what I loved last week that people might not have noticed because the stat line wasn't impressive for Kareem Hunt last week. He snuck into the end zone at the end of the game, was pretty much not productive at all before that. But you might have missed the fact that this, it, it might not be prescriptive. He was the goal line back. He had all of the work in right. the red zone. And if that continues, the ceiling is even higher for Kareem Hunt. He always It always works out for Kareem Hunt. It, it just evens out. It's either... High volume, low efficiency in a good, goodish game, or it's low volume, high efficiency in a good game. It just works out for him. Yeah, and and he should have had two touchdowns. He was a centimeter away last week. I, I like it a lot. My start of the week at the running back position is Antonio Gibson. 
He has been that's your guy. F- phenomenal, absolutely. <laughs> he's he's uh, my guy. No, um, <laughs> I was like, how, how angry can Mike get in one second? <laughs> Yeah, everyone knows that's the, you know, Mike, Mike, it was his preseason MVP. And so, well done. Oh, I mean, look, over the last five weeks, he's the running back six. And they have their bye week in the last five weeks. So that's in four games. So maybe after he's the, the running back six. Sorry, go ahead. And uh, he's up over 50% of the snaps. And if you remember, he lit up Dallas for 128 and a touchdown in week seven. So Antonio Gibson is a smash start. And I am going with the vote of confidence for the Colts rookie, Jonathan Taylor. Is he off the schneid? We'll find out this weekend, but 26 opportunities last week. That is his highest opportunity share of the season. Yes, Naeem Hines is still there, but Jordan Wilkins was down to 11% of the snaps and just 13% of the carries. The matchup is good. The Titans are a top 10 matchup for fantasy running backs, and it looks like they made the change that we're going to feature Jonathan Taylor. I know it's just one game, but I am I am bought in that they will give him they were. Oh man, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he scored four points against these guys two weeks ago. I'm scared. I'm still scared. This is the trap that I'm worried about with Jonathan Taylor. But I hope you're right. I hope for fantasy players. I hope for Jonathan Taylor. You invest that kind of draft capital. I hope that that was a decision last week that was actually made, not just the Packers being generous. Uh, wide receivers, Robbie Anderson. I'm going to do it. I like it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go with process over the recent results. Taking on Minnesota, 29th against uh, wide receivers. Look, the targets have to pan out for Robbie Anderson. He's averaging 8.8 a game in the last five games. That's 100, and he's on 100 reception pace in that time. But he's doing the old DJ Moore magic trick, which mm-hmm. is called not scoring touchdowns. Week one, he scored. He hasn't scored since then. Teddy Bridgewater coming back. His first read on the majority of plays is Robbie Anderson. It's time for those targets to turn into production again. So I'm going to go out on a limb this week and uh, hope we're all thankful for Robbie Anderson when it's all said and done. All right. I like it. I'm, I'm going with Devontae Parker, a player that since the changeover from Fitzmagic, you haven't been sure. Can can you start him or not? But if you look at you know those those process metrics, the wide receiver target percentage since Preston Williams has gone down, 37%, 47%, 39%. He is the clear-cut number one in this offense. And what we saw last week was good news. Here's here's what's going to happen. Two is going to play better, in which case Parker's good, or two is going to get benched and Fitzmagic will come in, in which case Parker's good. It's against the Jets. The Jets are not a good defense or offense or team. And so I think you can play Devontae Parker, if not now, when. And... I guess we're all in in the matchup against the Minnesota Vikings because my wide receiver start is the other side of the ball from – or other side of the field, I should say, from Robbie Anderson. DJ Moore, Minnesota giving up 36 points per game to the wide receiver. DJ Moore is heating up. Five of his last seven games, five of his last seven, he has been over 90 yards, and one of those was with P.J. Walker. Uh, did you guys realize that now he has an extra game get it that Carolina has not had their bye week yet. DJ Moore has the fourth most receiving yards in the NFL. This guy that we keep waffling back and forth, do I start DJ Moore? He has the fourth yards. It, it's it's crazy. And, and Robbie Anderson is actually ninth. It, it's wild that these guys are putting up so many yards without the touchdowns. Uh, the touchdowns should come. <laughs> Should come against Look, Minnesota. In fantasy football, early stink is worse than late stink on your perception. Mm-hmm. DJ Moore's start to the season is deceiving. I mean, the fact that he's outpacing Anderson by that amount and he's consistently making big plays, and, you know, uh, I I have a great deal of confidence that it will continue for DJ Moore. They have to get him the ball. So uh, this will be very, very interesting to watch. And then we have tight ends. They play football, too. I'm going to go with Austin Hooper against Jacksonville. So I've got a couple from the Jacksonville game. Baker Mayfield is targeting his tight ends uh, at the third highest rate, 29% of the time. And for goodness sakes, he finally gets a game outside of the weather. <laughs> he just felt like yeah, in the cartoon when it's just him yeah. and, and the black thundercloud yep. is, is following him around. Yeah, Eeyore Mayfield. Uh, <laughs> and he just missed a touchdown last week to Austin yeah. Hooper. Jacksonville's giving up the second most points to opposing tight ends on a weekly basis. And I imagine, as silly as it is, it's got to be 
better than Luton, right? It, to have Mike Glennon with more experience out there, the potential to move the football with James Robinson. I think Cooper can have a nice week. We try to go a little bit lower down in the tight end ranks here so that you have an option. Yeah, I, I love your pick because I do think this is going to be a good week for Baker. Not necessarily start him for fantasy good, but just he's not going to be as bad as he's been. I, I wanted to go with Jarvis, actually, as my start of the week. I think he's in play, but I, I can't move him all the way up to being a start of the week. Who I can start for sure this week is Jordan Reed. Now, yeah, look, there it is. it's dicey. He could very well go down on that first play. We all know it. But, I mean, you could have a tight end who plays every snap of the game and ends with a goose because that's the tight end Boom, position. Boom, shakalaka! <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm playing Jordan Reed. Uh, we brought this up uh, in his last game before the bye. That was, he was still getting healthy because he was, he was barely used. Only on the field 44% of the time. Still received 15% of the team's targets. Finished as the tight end six with six targets for five receptions, 62 yards. And now he's playing the Rams, who, yes, they're a lockdown defense. They're stopping everybody. They're top five against quarterbacks, against running backs, against wide receivers. But where you beat them is against tight ends. They, they're they middle of the pack there, and the 49ers receiving options are all kaput right now. So I think Jordan Reed is, is, an, is definitely someone you should start. And because I uh, don't like myself, my tight end star of the week will yet again be Evan Engram. From the New York Giants, the Philly game was a major disappointment. I totally get that, but it's the tight end position, and he still had those right before that three games straight of nine or more targets, and the matchup against the Bengals is premium. I'm playing Ingram if I've got him. Yeah, I mean, Thanksgiving Day, all about glutton, gluttony, right? I yeah. Mean, you eat a lot, yeah. and you're a glutton for punishment. Yeah, so Evan Ingram as the start of the week is that's yeah, right. Is all very, set up. Very Thanksgiving-y. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because Thanksgiving, it's about gluttony. I mean, well, I mean, yeah. I'm not saying it should be, <laughs> but. All right, all the rankings, the start, sit tool. Make sure you check it out at thefantasyfootballers.com. Jason, it's time. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% guaranteed boom, boom, kicker of the week. For the Megalodon show, I need to kick some but, so I'm going with the Bills kicker, Tyler Bass. <laughs> yeah, baby. A different kind of rock. Now, I see what you did there. Mm -hmm. I like it. A little bit. I don't like it. Uh, <laughs> you, you did it backwards, man. Well, That's but, what I thought. But you have to start with Tyler Bass and then say you're going to kick some butt. I completely agree, but the the kicker always comes second. What was a man to do? You 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 made the rules. Do better. <laughs> <laughs> These are the rules I wrote at the beginning of this segment. I can't possibly change them. Oh my gosh. Well, uh Tyler Bass was the headline there? Is that the Ty headline? Uh yes, Tyler Bass. Okay, locked and loaded. Let's get into the forecast. Fantasy forecast. You guys ready for this? Yes, buckle up. You guys ready? <gasps> the Los Angeles. Oh, <laughs> I started it terribly. The Las Vegas Raiders mm. at six and four, taking on the Atlanta Falcons at three and seven. Raiders are three point favorites. It's a fifty-five point oh. five over under, just like we like it. And this should be, on paper, a great situation for fantasy players. Las Vegas is allowing the fourth most fantasy points per drive, the second most rushing touchdowns allowed. Atlanta is giving up the second most passing yards, most yards per play. Both teams very generous, very charitable yes, during the yes. holiday season. Tis uh, the season. Yeah, exactly. But Derek Carr, Matt Ryan, we've already talked about them. They're both starts of the week. Put them in your lineup. Josh Jacobs, yes. Every single week you play Josh Jacobs. Uh, Todd Gurley, however. I wanted to make Todd Gurley my start of the week at the running back position, but I already had Evan Ingram, and I couldn't have two players in there to really make me hate myself. Right. You would hate Thanksgiving even more. Oh, in yeah. yeah it, would, it would not go well. But Gurley, it, last week was a total disaster, but this is a much better matchup. Uh, I guess some of this really depends on the health of Julio Jones because Todd Gurley 
goes as far as the offense goes. He needs to score. Yeah. He needs to score. Uh, but I think that he's got a good opportunity this week. All right, and then w- what opportunity will Julio have to play? Do you think he will be out there? I lean no. I lean yes, obviously, due to making Matt Ryan my start of the week. Otherwise, pivot to Taysom Hill. Uh, I, I do think he will be there since he was able to finish the game um, and has a history of knowing how to deal with these things. But it, it's a big deal. Uh, we've seen the Falcons offense completely struggle to be relevant regardless of the matchup if Julio is not there. So I think everyone is is hoping Julio's there. If he is, you play him. Calvin Ridley, you play oh, for oh, sure. Oh, baby. But if, if Julio Jones is out, Calvin Ridley – Absolutely. That's again, it, how much of that is the same argument for Gurley, though, where it's like if Julio's out, we know Matt Ryan doesn't have, uh, I mean, he averages like nine fantasy points. How can yes. that be enough to provide Calvin Ridley? Because Calvin Ridley gets everything. Okay. Nelson Aguilar, six for 88 and one last week. Atlanta's allowing the most 20 plus yard completions in the NFL. That's the Nelson Aguilar special. Do we like him this week? Yep. I'll start him. Absolutely. I would have taken him as – I almost made him my start of the week. I would have taken him up to 100, but I felt like he's been too good to be one of those players. So uh, Nelson Aguilar is, is absolutely a, a flex option. Nelson and, Aguilar or Juju Smith-Schuster? I, I would play Nelson Aguilar because of the ankle injury to Juju. What about if Julio misses Russell Gage or Nelson Aguilar? I would go Nelson, Nelson. Aguilar. Okay. Darren Waller. <laughs> nice to see him have another big game last week. Yes. And then uh, – uh, Hayden Hurst is I mean you are you can play the game yeah I mean and, and I I, th- I think you can again last week against the Saints at the beginning of the year they were one to target for tight ends but they have locked it down over the last six weeks they're number one against tight end and they've played against some good tight ends we've seen Hayden Hurst disappear in those Julio list games this is a matchup that you can win I think Hayden Hurst is absolutely in play as one of the mediocre tight ends to take a shot on despite Last week's goose. Last week's goose is irrelevant. All tight ends have bad games. Before that game, uh, Hayden Hurst was on a month straight of averaging 60 yards per game. So he, he's in the conversation. Los Angeles, the Chargers, 3-7, and seven, taking on the Buffalo Bills, who are 7-3. and three. They had two weeks to think about DeAndre Hopkins, uh, Randy Mossing them. And they come back here. They're 5.5-point favorites. It's a 53-point over-under, which is nice. You've got Justin Herbert, who's a blast to watch play football. You've got uh, Josh Allen again, who coming off of the bye week, most 20-plus yard completions in the NFL, highest pass success rate. You're playing Josh Allen over almost everybody, aren't you? Yes. Yes, Josh Allen could very easily wind up as the number one quarterback on the week. I expect him to be top five. He's an absolute must start. Justin Herbert is on pace for the best statistical rookie quarterback season in NFL history. Should be 40, Sounds about right. 4,500 passing yards, 37 passing touchdowns. Do, do we properly value him in terms of what he can become? I mean, this is a brand new player. Patrick Mahomes got to sit a year back behind Alex Smith. He gets Andy Reid. We talk about that all the time. Here's Justin Herbert. Ho hum, I'm a rookie. I'm gonna go for forty five hundred and thirty seven. Yeah, it's he still just he has that the 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 childlike wondery about him. Okay, I don't know what that means. Jason? I mean, like, I mean, he's he's not old enough yet to realize what he is doing. Yeah, long long term. I mean, I, players normally get better, right? There's the potential that he yeah. gets better. Is my point. Long term, uh, he's he's certainly going to have a, a great career ahead of him. I think there are. Worries. I think some of the reason that we question whether he will take a you know a step up from where he is now in a major way for fantasy is because the Chargers defense is elite, but not right now because everyone got injured. All of their stars on defense, you know, were were absent or have been absent so much that their defense just. It gives up points left, right, and center. I think next year when they have Austin Eckler back and a defense that is healthy and, uh, you know, they, it's not like they have an offensive-minded head coach. Granted, he's letting them, he's letting Herbert go, but I don't think that's – I don't think they want to win games. Uh, Anthony Lynn, you know, that's, that's you know, winning 35-30. to 30, He'd rather win 24-20. to 20, And so you, that's where my worry comes in from fantasy output. But right now their defense stinks – 
The Bills are going to put put up a lot of points, and for this week, Justin Herbert is a phenomenal play. Yeah, and you have, can Herbert get better? Well, maybe next week. Hopefully, by next week, Justin Herbert will no longer be checking it down to the likes of Kalen Balage, Joshua Kelly. How dare you? And Justin Jackson. Justin Jackson's fine. I like him, but like that's where we could go. Justin Herbert is doing all of this without a superstar pass catching running back right now which he's going to get back in a few weeks. Not to stay on him for too long, but I mean, the question can be asked another way. Where is where does he belong in your dynasty draft? Ooh. Well, I mean, he's already he's a top 10 quarterback for sure. How much Who do you take above that? him? I guess is another. I mean, Mahomes, you're taking Mahomes. Kyler. Are you taking Lamar Jackson ahead of Justin Herbert? No. I don't think Man. I am. I don't oh, think I am. I'm taking Josh brutal. Allen ahead. Kyler, yes. Josh Allen, sure. Uh, now, what about you, you, you? I think the real Joe issue Burrow. Is, yeah, uh, I don't know, man. I mean, with this now injury, it's, yeah, I, yeah. I, I will say this: Russell Wilson, Russ you, Watson, maybe Watson. I would take a hit, but Russell Wilson's the the big question mark because he's phenomenal. He's got years left, but the age gap is significant, so that's tough. I would yeah. probably go Russ. Yeah, I mean, top eight sounds like uh, you cannot start generally a running back from Buffalo. <laughs> But what about this week? Man, this week's matchup is so good. The Chargers have been so downright awful against the running game. And if Zach Moss gets touchdown, I wouldn't be surprised. He's a break glass in case of emergency type of player to me. And I don't – I'm not a big Zach Moss truther. I didn't love his college film. I didn't like him coming out. Uh, but when the matchup and the opportunity is there with a game that projects to have a lot of points scored, I, I think he could end up being a fine fantasy play. Kalen Balash. He is uh, Jason has him ranked highest right now this Ooh, week than, than everybody. Last three weeks, though, 18, 24, 25 opportunities, nine targets last week. Buffalo allows the highest rush success rate in the NFL, the third most 10-plus yard runs. Are you playing Bellage over Clyde Edwards-Alaire at Tampa or James Conner at Baltimore? I'll play him over Conner for sure. I think I would... I think he's Man. in the conversation with Clyde Edwards Alaire because he's of the, the Tampa yeah. Bay matchup. Um, this is, you know, truly playing the matchups here. A good matchup for Kalen Balaj, terrible one for Clyde Edwards Alaire. A lot you, of check down opportunities if they get behind. Yeah, I, I think it could go either way, but I would probably sneak Balaj in ahead. Kenan Allen's incredible, and you play him. Oh, he's so good. Stephon Diggs, oh, same he's story. So, good. so great. Uh, Mike Williams, John Brown, Cole Beasley. Mike brought up Cole Beasley as somebody he believes in this week to take it to 100. But would you put him in your lineup? Yeah, that, that's it, it. Assuming that John Brown continues to miss practice, uh, even if he enters the game limited, like uh, it, it is not actually out. If he's if John Brown is limited going to the game, then yes, Cole Beasley would be uh, in play, especially in PPR. Yeah, I mean, you you might be able to play all all three wide receivers. Seventy five percent of the team's targets are going to the wide receiver position in Buffalo. That's crazy. That's higher than last year's Ryan Fitzpatrick. Uh, you mean the, couple, the, the back when he was on the Jets? Right, back with the Jets when they had no tight ends to throw the ball to, and it was Eric Decker and Brandon Marshall. And that was it. Yeah, so, those are the only people that got the ball. I mean, it, it's so nice having Diggs. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. Yes, I I can see why he is. Our wide receiver six on the week. Allen's at five on the week. Hunter Henry, most <laughs> run, most routes run at the tight end position over the last month. Love what I've seen in terms of the red zone mm -hmm. uh, eyeballs of of Justin Herbert looking Hunter Henry's way. Mike Williams, you always have a big play uh, potential there. He could see Tre'Davious White frequently. It is a boom type of play. Mike Williams or, or Nelson Aguilar this week. Oh, I'm going to play Mike Williams. I, I like I like Nelson Aguilar, but Mike Williams is a guy I'm going to start every single week, and I'm going to I'm going to be okay with the bad weeks. I'm going to be okay because he has the opportunity for the 50 yard touchdown at a very high pace. And while Aguilar has been getting it done as well, I just believe in the talent of Mike Williams more. And Tre'Davious White, yeah, he might be on a couple of those deep passes, but he could end up uh, moving on Keenan Allen as well. So I I don't think he's going to shadow one of these players. The New York Giants at three and seven take on the Cincinnati Bengals at two seven and one. We talked about it earlier. Quarterback change coming for Cincinnati. The Giants are five and a half point favorites. It's only how it's only got a forty two and a half point over under. Gives the Bengals eighteen and a half points. Brandon Allen will start. 
You will not have Joe Mixon, who's on IR. You will not have Joe Burrow because Brandon Allen gets uh, gets the opportunity to finish this year out. So what does it mean for Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, A.J. Green, and company? Where could you turn? I turn to my bench with these guys. Um, I've had a lot of questions about T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd. What do you do with them? And that's exactly what I do. I bench them. I don't want to drop them yet. I want to see what this offense looks like. This is a really, really good test because the Giants aren't a bad defense. They're, they're really not. You, you look at their record and you think they must be terrible. They're not, but they're not a great defense. So this is just middle of the road when your backup quarterback comes in. Who's he going to target? How often? What's it going to look like? And I, I, like, I like the lesson we're going to learn from this matchup, it's, but I'm going to learn while it's on my bench. And it's not even the backup. I mean, the backup is, is Ryan Finley. Brandon Allen was on the practice squad. They just activated him from there because, well, because Finley. Because they watched Finley. If Finley's not going to get the job done, you, at least maybe you have something with Brandon Allen. So, Jay, would you play? Uh, let's go on the other the other side of the ball. Sterling Shepard. Oh yeah. Okay. O over these yeah. Bengals mm -hmm. options, absolutely. Okay. If I had to sh choose a Bengal option, it would be Tyler Boyd. Yes. Um, he can. He's, he's gotten it he done with some backups safest, before. Yeah. yeah. On the other side, Wayne Gallman. He's a solid running back to start. We mentioned it yesterday. He's had a nice run. Uh, he should have an opportunity against this Bengals defense in a game where they should be actually winning. Yeah, they should be. <laughs> uh, Daniel Jones, Jason's stream of the week. I still, you know, you probably have a better option, but the matchup says he could have a pretty impressive uh, performance. He's been running the football a lot. Who's he going to throw to? Slayton was my taking it up to 100. Sterling Shepard, six-plus receptions in four straight games. Mm -hmm. Evan Ingram has a great matchup. The The Bengals are as bad as it gets against tight end. Bad as it gets is good for Evan Ingram or bad for you if he traps you again. Mm -hmm. So, um, Let's move on. Tennessee, the Titans, 7-3, and three, taking on the 7-3 and three Colts. This is a fun game. This is going to be a... Divisional battle. This could have uh, huge implications on how this season ends for both of these teams. Colts are three and a half point favorites. Do they get the respect now? Is that what's happening? Do people actually understand that Indianapolis is here to stay? Yeah, I think so. When when you come back from a deficit against a phenomenal team like the Packers and you dominate them in the second half after making changes, the coach gets respect. Philip Rivers gets you know credit. Uh, and that run game really is what deserves it because they dominated the line of scrimmage. We've been talking from before the preseason about this great offensive line, and I've kind of been a little bit disappointed with what I've seen from the offensive line in the running game. Pass protection's been phenomenal. But this matchup right here against Tennessee, uh, I, th I think the offensive line of the Colts will be pushing around the defensive line of the Tennessee Titans pretty heavily. The Titans' defense has been beat up. And I don't mean super injured, although they do have some of that. I mean, at every position, quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, they all have put up big games against uh, against the Titans. Now, it hasn't been very easy to predict who has the big games for Indianapolis. That's been the challenge. Is it a Hines week, a Wilkins week, a Taylor week? Is it Pittman? Is it going to be Zach Pascal or T.Y. Hilton or a tight end week, Jack Doyle. And or, if it's a tight end, is it Jack Doyle or is it Gigantor <laughs> or Trey Burton? Yeah, they're, they're, it's a, you know, you can get paralyzed here trying to find the opportunity. Now, Mike, uh, he spoke out about his confidence with Jonathan Taylor, mm -hmm. which, uh, you know, it's hard for me to have that confidence, but I get it. He had a nice week last week and the matchup is good on paper. Naeem Hines, he ping pong balls between top 10 running back weeks and disaster. So, uh, RB7, RB44, RB3, RB37. Mm, I is... guess the question that I have for you guys, and I think it determines maybe how you make the decision as a fantasy player, is will Tennessee compete and will they be in a position to put up points against a tough Indianapolis defense? Because while the Colts have been a great defense this year on the course of the whole year, the last uh, six weeks, they've softened up a bit. They've given up more fantasy points overall. I think Tennessee competes in this game. I do too. Which puts me, uh, you know, more in the category of I think where the major mismatch happens is letting Phillip Rivers throw the football. Uh, I don't think they get pressure on him. And so does that mean it's better for Hines? Does that mean it's a game where you can find value at wide receiver? What do you guys think? 
Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I see it playing out has, how you do. I think it's going to be a close game. I think uh, the Titans will will keep it tight. Um, what that means to me when I look at the Colts side of the ball is that Hines can be in play. I still believe that I would start Jonathan Taylor ahead of Hines, and Pittman is the wide receiver that I would want. Can't trust T.Y. Hilton at this point. I don't think Pascal is good enough or gets enough targets at regular volume. So to me, it's basically Jonathan Taylor, Michael Pittman, and if I'm looking at the tight ends, I'm looking for touchdowns, right? Because Moali Cox has been involved, but he hasn't really been getting the touchdowns. Uh, Trey Burton, to me, is the one that they're going to use near the goal line the most. I don't really want any of them because... I, I man, if two of these guys could just go on vacation, I mean the <laughs> role is great, uh, you know. But they utilize the fact that they have three for misdirection, and it's 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 why their tight end position does so well. But it's not good for fantasy, yeah, so I'll probably like, stay away. I mean, week two, remember remember Jack Gantor when he was like the only one? Oh, it was a gigantic week, and he was five for one eleven. That was awesome. So Ryan Tannehill, are you steering clear this week? Yeah, I probably am steering clear. Ryan right. Tannehill or Lamar Jackson? I would go Lamar Jackson. Right. I, I think the potential for the the large upside game, the the you know a fifty yard rushing touchdown or something. That, I'll take Tannehill. Yeah, I, I I like that you take Tannehill. I do. Um, man, e even when I said Lamar Jackson, it didn't feel great. I don't think I don't think Lamar can put a monster game up against Pittsburgh. Yeah. How about you think Tannehill can put either. a monster game up against the Colts? Uh, well, look, AJ Brown. No, I don't. And it's a, it's, I mean, it's a narrow margin here. There's not one I have. I don't want to play either guy. Yeah, that's so for me. So maybe we're spinning the wrong narrative here. Well, no, no, it, it's a real question that I'm sure some people have. That's why for me, I don't believe that either of those quarterbacks is going to have a big game. So give me the one who is is a higher floor, like safer option. Yeah, yeah, the higher floor, which would be Lamar Jackson. Derrick Henry uh, is good. Oh, so good. <laughs> at football. Does he have more yards per contact than any other running back other than Delvin Cook has on this season? <laughs> I mean, he's he's been phenomenal. Uh, you can't do anything about Sorry, uh, how, yards after contact. Yes. Apparently, I said yards per contact. Yes. I don't know what that means. Nobody does. Yeah, because um, Derrick Henry has uh, 1,079 rushing yards. Dalvin Cook has 1,069 rushing yards. And in third place is James Robinson at 762. So, yes, Derrick Henry has more yards, more rushing yards after contact than the third place rushing. That was right a now. tweet from Ian uh, Harditz. Yeah. So, pretty, pretty crazy. Antonio Brown, just try to tackle. AJ him. Brown. AJ Brown is uh, who we're talking about. <laughs> yes. Oh, Look, the megalodon! The megalodon starting kicking, to kick in. Kicking yes, in, man. Can you give me a smelling salt? Can we? Oh, can we, we got to get the smelling get... salts oh. back in here. I, that's two mistakes in like a minute. Oh, oh need... salt break. Yeah, get it. Get that over here. Uh, so, See, AJ, Mike, I only got like four hours of sleep. AJ Brown is in. I want to talk about Corey Davis here for a little bit. Do uh, we have to? We do have to. Do you, I know because. I know. Do you realize how solid Corey Davis has been? He has two games outside of the top 40, which, I mean, one was against Chicago, a three-target game that turned into a goose. Uh, and then, uh, unfortunately, week three, did someone just throw a salt at me? Yeah, yeah. I threw a smelling salt at you. Excellent. Uh, in, in week three... <laughs> Mega salt! <laughs> I'm back! It's A.J. Brown! Uh, week three against Minnesota... Five for 69. He was the wide receiver 41. Jason's going in. He has <laughs> he assaulted. Uh, but like, if you look at the consistency of Corey Davis, it's been great. Like, He has been a very reliable wide receiver. He has this, the stink of the goose uh, from week nine against Chicago. And like that's... The when stink someone, of the goose. You don't want the stink of the, the goose. The stink of the goose is brutal, man, because that sticks with people and it gets you freaked out from... Multiple weeks of uh, I'm off. I'm I'm not playing Corey Davis. But what about the matchup? Like the matchup uh, that he just had against the Baltimore Ravens, where he was five for one thirteen. Here's what I believe about Corey Davis. Truly, I do not believe Ryan Tannehill has a preference between AJ Brown and Corey Davis on any play. I think that both guys. I'm moving him up now. I, now AJ Brown is more talented than Corey Davis, so he is more productive than Corey Davis. But when Tannehill play action passes I think he looks for both guys and Corey Davis has been more consistent this year so I, you know 
we have to change our our opinion if we yes. think that he can and do it consistently. I'm uh, glad you brought this up, Mike. You're you're enlightening myself and our and audience. others. Yes, but what about Antonio Brown in this matchup? <laughs> I, I well, I would not play Antonio Sit Brown him in this not matchup. A, not in this matchup. Okay. No, no way. Let's see if we can get through another one. Carolina four and seven. The Minnesota Vikings. Oh, go! That was Woo! the the weirdest. Woo! You you broke the the smelling salt yeah. at nose Woo! level, and I don't oh, understand baby. why you did that. Cause I'm back, I'm back. Oh, your eyes are watering. Oh man, eighty five minutes in, and you broke it at the nose. I've never seen that. Well, I, I wanted to way. break it into the microphone. Oh, I heard it. Yeah, but my nose was in the way. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> good to go. Holy Toledo, <laughs> uh, Minnesota. Four point favorites in this one, 48 and a half point over under. I do like Minnesota in this game. Adam Thielen, uh, we got a report mid Megalodon that uh, head coach Mike Zimmer said he doesn't know if he's going to be cleared in time. So it's it's up in the air, which is a tough place to be if you are yeah. leaning on Adam Thielen in his mandatory two touchdowns a week that he is giving fantasy players. What's right now. brutal this year or this week is three matchups mm -hmm. on Thursday. And it's very possible that you have like you're you have one of those wide receivers in that game, and you're gonna be f your hand will be forced that you have to play them. You look like you were shaking a little bit. Oh, dude, I'm I am. Uh, you good to go? I am awake. You are awake. Uh, like yeah, like Chase Kristen. Claypool. You just play him on Thursday then yeah. instead of playing waiting for Thielen. Yeah. I'm wide awake. Yeah, I, I heard the Chris and Michael Thank start you. there. <laughs> Uh, you also have Teddy Bridgewater's availability up in the air. We don't know if he will be playing quarterback. Does it much matter to you fantasy-wise? Are your decisions changing with more Robinson, Samuel? I don't think my decisions are changing. I'm, I'm, I won't I'm, play I... Teddy. <laughs> sure, yes, that's that's actually one that would change. But as far as the wide receiver uh, trifecta, you, you might have more output. I think it's better, obviously, to have Teddy Bridgewater than to yeah, have P.J. Walker. Be. But the gap between them and what we saw from week one says, I'm, I'm going to make the same decisions uh, as to whether or not I'm going to start these guys. And and really, I, I think you could take a shot on, on all three wide receivers. Did Kirk Cousins do enough last week to where you want to stream him in this game? Yeah, he did it for me. What about if Thielen's out? Then no. I was asking this question to Jason earlier, and and Mike, I'd like to have you weigh in. Justin Jefferson, he has taken the league by storm. Mm -hmm. People worried about him being a slot wide receiver. Oh, yeah. what will he be able to do? He's just like the best vertical threat in all of football. Yeah. I Are mean, you Chase Claypool? He's in the argument too for the rookies. Sure, sure, sure. Statistically, I think Jefferson's technically winning on that one, but they're Is close. He? Yeah, well, not if you go touchdowns. Probably. Yeah, yards per route uh, run. He's number he's one. Mm. Outlandish. He's up there where only Julio lives. <laughs> Which is a, a scary place on top of a mountain, a lot of stairs. Uh, what do you do? Is Jefferson better without Thielen? No. Is the, is the ceiling higher without Thielen? I mean, all the touchdowns go to Thielen. Je Jefferson's jealous. Yeah, but uh, I don't. As great as Justin Jefferson has been, Adam Thielen is elite. Like at, you, if as a defense, you have to scheme for Adam Thielen. He changes everything. And even with all the schemes that the, that defenses are trying to do this year, Adam Thielen is still dominating, especially in the touchdown area. But I. Can't imagine that it is actually better for Justin Jefferson if Adam Thielen is out. The, the the whole offense gets a downgrade. Maybe he gets a few more targets, but you want the offense to move, and Adam Thielen is a big part of that. And and I think Thielen is so good that I would wait if if I had pivots that were on Thursday because of the the triple header. Uh, of football on Thanksgiving, and those were my alternatives. And I'm not sure if Adam Thielen is going to play. I'm I'm going to make a waiver wire transaction and find some other wide receiver I can pick up that is a, a rung or two down for the hope of having Adam Thielen. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna feel it. I feel like we've talked enough about Carolina. We broke down Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore in the starts of the week. If Christian McCaffrey's back, you play him. Yes. If he's not, you play Mike Davis. That is correct. Easy peasy. What about Curtis Samuel? Came back last week. Nice game after Stank. Um, he's a shot in the dark. Would you play Curtis Samuel or Marvin Jones? Marvin uh, Jones. I'll play Marvin Jones. I got one for you. Curtis Samuel, 
or Christian Kirk against the Patriots? Oh, that's that's really good. Um, I I would take the matchup in that case because I I see them as somewhat similar. Um, Kirk being more of the two, but lately Larry Fitzgerald's been more involved in the offense, and sometimes Kirk is the three, just like Curtis Samuel can be. So I'm going to take the matchup against the Minnesota Vikings. Small update to an earlier matchup: Kenny Stills, Randall Cobb, both out officially. Okay, so it will be all Brandon Cooks and all Will Fuller. Uh, talk about consistent, dependable mashed potato style. Will Fuller has been that for fantasy players this yeah. year. And dependable and Will Fuller, could you imagine I would have said that before the year with I all mean, of we, his we injury problems? He was the definition of high variance, and now it's like, no, he's he's the he's the steady rock. I mean, even last week when you talked about the Patriots shutting down the first option, he was double digits. Yeah. Uh, by the way, free agent. Nice year to have this year. Will, yes, Will it is. Um, anything else here we want to talk about? Move on to Arizona. Let's move on. Cardinals six and four taking on the Patriots four and six. Oh yeah, Cardinals two point favorites. Really? Okay, two point road I, favorites. I think that's fair. It's appropriate. Forty nine and a half point over under. Uh, these uh, a battle of the goal line quarterbacks. Murray has ten rushing touchdowns. Cam Newton has nine, and uh, slightly different size between them, but both getting into the end zone. Uh, Patriots, we know they want to run the football. You talked about Cam Newton earlier, Mike. Uh, mm -hmm. Kyler, you play every week. He, you know, heard some interviews around the Valley here. He's sore, but he's fine. They're trying to limit some reps. He throws the football a lot, but he's going to be out there. I did hear they're wanting to activate all three quarterbacks for this game. That gave me a, a twinge of worry. Um, I'm still going to play Kyler, and there's nothing you, you know, could say to, you know, obviously if I had Kyler or Josh Allen, and I have both of them on the same team. Okay, sure, I'll I'll go to Josh Allen because of the shoulder worry. Yeah, but like, what if it was Justin Herbert? I would go Herbs. Oh, I'd play Kyler. Herbs. Whoa. I mean, just because, oh, baby, just because the the threat of the shoulder injury uh, getting reaggravated or or worsened or injured. I mean, they're, they're Cardinals both good. traveling east hasn't always worked out. Yeah, tough. Uh, you know, tough defensive team at times obviously Watson got it done last week it's tough I mean one of the things that you're looking at too is like are you hyper confident in DeAndre Hopkins again this week yeah okay yeah I mean it, it doesn't matter if you that was more I'm gonna be honest that was just for me I have him <laughs> I just wanted to hear somebody say that they're super confident in DeAndre uh, Hopkins I mean Gilmore I'm super confident about Hopkins okay all right that's good I mean you should there, be there's nothing there I, and you know what if he's terrible this week Coming into next week, I will be super confident on DeAndre. I'll Huff. just go watch the Bills catch again. I'm sorry, Jason. I never should have doubted. But uh, Kenyon Drake, what do you do with Kenyon Drake this week? 15 touches last week. Yeah, you start him. I mean, Kenyon Drake, is he, he's been a very relevant fantasy option uh, the majority of his weeks. They, they, they haven't been, unfortunately, the top five finishes that you want. He hasn't been breaking off chunk plays left, right, and center, but he's getting the volume. And whenever he gets in the end zone, then he ends up with actually a, a really good fantasy. What about Drake game. or your guy, Balazs? Oh, that's an interesting one. I, I feel like this week with the expected point total, the pace of play, I think I would lean Balazs because I see Drake as more of a running back two. And and I see Balazs as a running back two. But if you if I had to say, yeah. you know, who gets in the end zone or who gets more receptions. Yeah, it's Balazs. I, I lean towards Balazs. Uh, Drake or Bruce Wayne Gallman? Oh, I would go Drake there for sure. <laughs> The Cincinnati is surprisingly decent against running backs. I'm Goldman. See, when you play running back for the Giants, you cannot become Batman. You just stay Bruce Wayne. You have to fight crime as Bruce Wayne. Oh, no. I think like he, but he at least has the cowl on. He has the cowl and the tuxedo. He borrowed it from Saquon? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, but Saquon's I'm not giving you the cape. Yeah, you're not giving him the whole thing? Yeah. No. You don't wear a cape. No, he's wearing that during rehab. Uh, Damian Harris at running back 22 on the week. Some question marks here if Sonny Michelle is active. Um, Al Borland, any changing thoughts on Sonny Michelle? Never. Okay, <laughs> so it doesn't like him. James White I do like uh, as a PPR start. He, If you look at Rex Burkhead, and I'll talk about this later in the show as well, but Rex Burkhead was averaging 30 to 40% of the snaps at the position, and those are high-value Four plus targets a game numbers. That's going to go to James White. It was double digits last week. 
I, I, he's I, not got a ceiling, but he's got a floor. I, I agree. If you're in a full PPR league, you can play James White. Rex Burkhead makes a difference. I would say that you know what we've seen historically. We we joke about you know the Cardinals not not guarding the flat because they've been bad when pass catching running backs have faced them the last couple of years. But I I, I do want to point out. A uh, rookie sensation who couldn't get on the field, Isaiah Simmons, who's the speed guy who can guard players in the flat. He's actually now been worked in. He's he's over fifty percent of the defensive snaps, and we it's have a miracle. It. Yeah, and so um, it, it it gives me a little bit of pause. Chase on that Edmonds upside. or James White, same game. Chase Edmonds uh, six I opportunities will, last week, but yet still ended up the running back fourteen. I will go James White. In, in I know that Chase Edmonds has the higher ceiling. If he he could have the boom shakalaka game uh, i'm looking at james white what his his game log and there's something pretty wild that stands out he has been on the field for 50 plus percent of the snaps three times in those three games he's been a top 30 running back including twice as a top 20 guy because that turns into eight plus targets all right we won't linger here jacoby myers demir bird Nikhil harry no 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 yeah if somebody will probably have a good game but it's kind of hard to predict correct yeah. The Dolphins at 6-4 and four take on the New York Jets, who are 0-10. Dolphins are seven-point favorites in this one. It's a 44.5 point over-under. And uh, this is one of the games where you look at it and you say, maybe the Jets get that win. I mean, it's rare for a team to go winless. Miami, last week, you've got some issues on offense. The Jets showed a little bit of life on offense. I did pick them to cover in our office pool, mm, interesting. which didn't feel good. I went and threw up afterwards, um, but does he get the win here? Does Adam Gaze get in the win column? No. No, I don't think so. I, I, I think the Dolphins have been pretty well coached, and after a an, an unexpected loss and a benching, I, I think the team's going to come out and play hard, and I I just I don't see the Jets winning ever. So, uh, well, let's, let's go through the schedule real quick because that's an interesting exercise. Okay, so you're saying no against Miami. Next week. Vegas. Nah. Nope. Seattle. No, no way. Rams. No. Never. Baker Mayfield and the, and possible. the Cleveland. Yeah, yeah I would the say, Cleveland I would game's say possible. possible. At home, too. Yeah. This, this game and the that Cleveland game like are it. your two shots. There are only six games from Trevor Lawrence, guys. Oh, man. I Trevor Lawrence, uh, pl please it won't demand, be, it please won't demand be Gaze. a trade. Gaze will be gone. It won't be Adam Gase. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I don't trust the franchise. Well... The franchise that hires Adam Gase. It wasn't like this. I guess it wasn't is, like before they yeah. brought in Gase. We all thought he was good until he just let down. We right. knew beforehand. It was like, why would he have gotten a second job or a third or right. a fifth? It wasn't just the Jets looking at him. We were terrified out here in Arizona. Oh, yeah. man. Oh, Really dodged oh. a b-hole there. Yeah. Um, all right. Joe Flacco, we think, will be the starter again, which is good news for the Brashad Perryman dart throw. Uh, you Dude, know, and Denzel Mims, man, I, it, it's not just if you're willing to take a shot on Brashad Perryman, I think you have to at least consider Denzel Mims. Mims has appeared in four games and has seen seven or more targets in three of them. His yardage totals have uh, continued to increase. He hit, he was three for 71 against the Chargers. He didn't get the touchdown like Brashad Perryman, but they're he can't close the, the deal yet. That, he's, that's, he's, he's not closing the deal. He's getting the Perryman air yards. does all the time. He's getting the air yards and getting the deep targets just like Perryman is. But you're right. He hasn't come down with the ball on any of those really deep throws. And you want to see it. But I, I do believe that Mims can can get it done. I, I I get your argument, Mike. And if you ask me who's you know who's really more talented between Mims and Perryman, um, Mims is more talented, but he's, he's more raw. He's a, he's a rookie. He's uh, Perryman's a free agent, by the way. So, I don't know. The future could be brighter for Denzel Mims. Uh, Jason brought up Devontae Parker as his start of the week. And Frank Gore, we talked about him a little bit yesterday. He's infinite. He is all. Yeah, you can you could play him. He'll he'll get 15 carries, a somewhat okay chance at a touchdown. That's I, I do want to bring that up. I want you to understand. He broke a streak <laughs> of not scoring a touchdown that went back to week three of last year. Yeah. And he's been the starting running back for several uh, of those games since then. So it was anomalous. You are right. He does have an opportunity there. He will get more snaps. Michael P. Ryan. He is absolutely a start that you can play and hope yes. for 10 points. Well, I, But it's I, been a long time. 
Yeah, I mean, it's been a long time, but he wasn't getting – I mean, the, the the previous six games, he didn't have a single red zone carry. Uh, this last week, he had six. So it, the opportunities weren't there, and with P. Ryan out of the way, I think that – if they get now, here's the thing: they might never get to the red zone. So touchdown opportunities for the Jets are not common. But if they get around the goal line, I think he'll have the opportunity. Frank Gore, or one of the Buffalo running backs. I would take Gore. my shot on the upside of uh, Zach Moss. Frank Gore, oh, gross, or Gus Edwards against Pittsburgh. Gus. Okay. Yeah, I'd play Gus. All right. Gore has no ceiling. Correct. Thirteen points. If everything, if all the stars align, which yeah. is, by the way, stars align in that situation is Brashad Perryman is pass interfered with on a deep ball. <laughs> right. Sure. Uh, Tua is going to start. You're not going to start himself in Ahmed. Uh, we don't have updates on Miles Gaskin. Ahmed is a very, he could be one of those guys that you feel really uncomfortable with. And all of a sudden on Sunday, you're like, okay, he can, you can start him. Yeah. Uh, last two weeks, he's had 22 and 18 opportunities. It's if, like a downgraded version of Bellage right now. It's a slightly downgraded version of Miles Gaskin. I mean, yeah. If, if Gaskin's out, Ahmed is, can be played with confidence. Cleveland Browns, 7-3. and three, Jacksonville, 1-9. and nine, Starting a new quarterback. Doug Marone has had a rough go. Browns are 6.5-point favorites. It's a 49-point over-under. And, uh, you know, when you get in this situation where the quarterbacks are rotating, a lot of the times you settle in with, Things can't be worse than Jake Luton. I mean, he had the lowest completion percentage. Um, he was turning the ball over ridiculous amounts of time. Also played Pittsburgh. And Mike Glenn could be just as bad. We, right. we need to acknowledge that possibility. Do you like the, the Browns defense, even though you don't have Ward and you don't have Miles Garrett? Would you play the Browns D? Yeah, I, I would yes. absolutely play the Browns defense. Uh, you, you might be down a couple of players, but you're playing the Jacksonville Jaguars. So, yeah. Yeah, it, the, the matchup. Even if this was Gardner, you would still be playing the Cleveland Browns defense. And it's worth noting, uh, they went with Mike Glennon because you got a abandoned ship on Jake Luton. It wasn't Gardner yet, Gardner Minshew, because uh, Marone wants him to get a full week of practice throwing the ball. So Gardner Minshew is going to be back sooner than later. All right. Uh, James Robinson, you, you play him. Every week, he is productive. Uh, DJ Chark, we, we discussed it earlier in the show. He's risky. There is no way you can say he's not risky. He is. And that's where the list ends on the Jacksonville side. Nick Chubb, Cream Hunt, yep, play them. I don't play a wide receiver. I play Hooper on the Cleveland side. I agree. I, I think Jarvis Landry in a PPR, you could pick up. So here's a perfect example, right? You've got Adam Thielen. You need someone. Jarvis might be on the waivers. Uh, I I think you can pick him up and play him in a matchup where they're. You're, I mean, we haven't seen Baker be able to have the ability to throw with weather. Um, so you know, clear skies, hopefully, and we, you know, Jarvis has been. I a think he's good living wide on the, receiver in the past. Not that this year, though. No, not this year. I think the name is kind of the. I mean, I I think Higgins or Hodge has the same argument that Landry would have in that game, and Landry's been dealing with injuries. Would yeah. you play him, Mike? No. Uh, okay. Let's talk about the New Orleans Saints at 8-2 and two, taking on the Denver Broncos. Melvin Gordon, nice game last week. Saints are six-point favorites, by the way. 43.5 point over-under. That gives the Broncos just 18.5 points. Melvin Gordon, nice game. Touchdown dependent. Do we expect a reprise? No. Mm -mm. Not versus Is Saints. he a sit-worthy player? Would you play Frank Gore or Melvin Gordon, Mike? <laughs> We're going low. Uh, I would play Melvin Gordon in that case, uh, but, but that's not, about not with confidence. That's about where he is, though. I think he is a sit candidate, and and you know we there's it's funny you you talk about Melvin Gordon as bad and Frank Gore is good, but that's relative to who they are and what their expectations are. I don't expect either to be a running back too. Uh, I think they'll both be outside the top thirty running backs. Um, they will get some volume. And we've we've just seen too many weeks where Melvin Gordon was irrelevant once Philip Lindsay was on the field. He was great last week, fine, but the Saints' defense has just been on fire, and I think they're only going to get better with Taysom Hill slowing down the offense. If you want to feel pain and you have to decide a Denver Bronco wide receiver to start, his name is? Tim Patrick. Oh, yeah, Tim Patrick, for sure. 
All right. And then Noah Fant, he has not been a top 10 tight end since week two. Woof. This is probably not the week to do it against the number one defense against tight ends. Find another option. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, earlier in the year, the Saints were beat up by tight ends left, right, and center. The reality is th they're number one against tight ends because they're so good against the quarterbacks, and their defense has just been great. I, I would look for a different option. You can you could throw them in there because, you know, if you want four for 40. The Saints, for context, last six weeks, second against opposing fantasy quarterbacks, first against opposing fantasy running backs, first against opposing fantasy tight ends. Yeah, they've been locked down. Taysom Hill is my stream of the week. He's yep. a good play this week. Yep. Nine out of 10 uh, on play action passes last week. Alvin Kamara. Yep. Latavius Murray. Is he more interesting than he should be? Uh, yeah. I, I, I think Frank so. Frank Gore or Latavius uh, Murray, uh, uh, Mike? Uh, Frank Gore. Okay. I think I would go Latavius. I'm would looking you? at Latavius versus Melvin Gordon, and it's interesting to me because – one of these defenses recently has been, well, the best against running backs, and one of these defenses has been beat to heck by running backs on the ground. And Latavius Murray last week was up over fifty percent of the snaps. Uh, you but know that he, still only turned into uh, running back twenty six. I mean, he was twelve for forty nine. He was two for thirty six through the air. He was Where, really Latavius had thirty six receiving yards. Yeah, yeah. I'd be, I'd be playing that. Gordon in that situation just for potential upside. But I get what you're saying. I mean, Murray has settled. In, like, if you need to shoot for the running back thirty on the week, Latavius has a real shot of getting there every week. Yes. Yeah, I I I do think he has. He probably has more goal line opportunity than Frank Gore, just because the the reality of them being in the red zone, being in the five zone, uh, could be there. Maybe we haven't seen. Uh, let's see, we got they haven't three, turned to Murray there, have they? Yeah, we have three carries yeah. inside the five for Latavius Murray over the course of the year, and it's been since week seven that we saw one of those attempts. Michael Thomas, yep. You can play him. What about what do you do with Jared Cook? I I I think you cut Jared Cook. Um, open up your roster for someone. Do you someone. cut him or do you cut him? Oh, I think you would have to cut him because Jared Cook <laughs> is cut cut. Uh, yeah, he's he's good. He's he's obviously someone that around Cute. the end zone could get a touchdown, and maybe there's nobody else that's pivot worthy on your waiver wire. Maybe Jordan Reed wasn't there, or you got sniped by some jerk. Um, you know, that happens. Um, it happens. It does. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, the reality is Boom, I'm... Boom, shakalaka! <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't expect much from Jared Kuyuk while <laughs> Taysom Hill is the is the quarterback. 49ers at 4-6 and six take on the Los Angeles Rams, who sit at 7-3. and three. Rams are seven-point favorites. It's a 45-point over-under. San Francisco won this matchup with a different team back in week six where Kittle went seven for 109 and Jared Goff was hashtag bad. Oh, yeah, he was. Less, uh, 19 for 38 passing. Oh, he was bad. Uh, I am still not over the fact that Jared Goff was a on-paper <laughs> smash start against Seattle and did absolutely nothing. Worst game of the year fantasy-wise and then comes back last week and gives you that performance. Jared Goff's on three straight games of – 300 plus passing yards right which includes that game where he was the worst yeah fantasy i mean quarterback he oh. it hasn't turned into fantasy output because what well, did against tampa bay because he had three passing touchdowns. oh announcing gear in gear uh but he did he had a dry spell of of touchdowns there here's here's a stat for you first five games never surpassed 32 pass attempts last five games every time throwing the football yeah. Cup, Woods, got confidence boost this past week. Won you weeks. Big games from both of those guys. Um, you, you saw Josh Reynolds take a step back again in that one. You can't really pick a tight end on that offense because both guys get targeted, and it's just not predictable. Uh, so I probably avoid that, and San Francisco's been good against them over the last six weeks. Agreed. Um, and I, what do you do with Goff based on all that hype there? I think you can stream him if you need to. I would rather not stream him because it's a divisional opponent. This, you know, it's a it's a different San Francisco 49ers team. They've lost a lot. They haven't been able to play the the great San Francisco 49ers defense that they were the first half of the year. And, and but Jared, if there's a game that they're going to get up for it, it's going to be the divisional opponent against the Rams. Jared Goff or Kirk Cousins against Carolina. I would go Kirk Cousins. 
Jared Goff or Daniel Jones? Against... I'll go Daniel Jones. Okay. And last one, Jared Goff or Carson Wentz versus Seattle? <sighs> The matchup is so good. <laughs> I, I was asking ironic because I just did this with golf. I played him against Seattle. I I was I was asking Mike while we were doing our rankings. I was like, "What do you do with Carson Wentz?" I mean, this is a smash play, and I I can't tell people to play him. I I wouldn't play him myself, but at the same time, I mean, ever everybody throws for three hundred plus yards against Seattle. Just, say, just say no. Just say no to drugs. <laughs> just say no. Uh, I think it proves the point, though, that I'm not look. I'm not excited about golf in this matchup. Every quarterback in the NFL in the right matchup can have a nice fantasy game, but we have to probably stop thinking of Carson Wentz in the category of will have a great fantasy game in that matchup, and it sucks. That's fair. I'm thinking about that in a lot of leagues where he's been. I'm I'm streaming quarterbacks. I'm like, ooh, ah, I'm I'm going somewhere else. I'm playing Derek Carr. You know, All right. All right, here's a it's stuff it's tough in the streets on the San Francisco offensive side of the ball. Mm -hmm. Um they have five running backs in, that are in questionable status. Maybe Jerry McKinnon isn't, but Raheem Mostert is and Tevin Coleman is and Jeff Wilson is and Jamichael Hasty went to IR. So if Mostert, McKinnon, and Coleman are all active this week. Are you playing Mostert against the Rams defense? No. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait a week. I think this is a full on, other than trying Jordan Reed out, I think you can just not play 49ers and be okay with your life. I agree. I, I think, you know, I've, I've brought up Jordan Reed. We've talked about him. The opportunities should be there. Um, but this this Rams defense has been phenomenal. I don't believe this, you know, Nick Mullins is going to really uh, give a lot of touchdown opportunities I mean this is a PPR play for six for 60 from Jordan Reed the you know I I don't think Moster or Coleman or McKinnon or Wilson or uh, you know uh, Hasty are, are going to get it done if Mostert is activated and is the starter I'm willing to play Mostert I mean we're talking about playing guys like Frank I, Gore sure. in most but Mostert is the only one I was I was going to say if he's active, the, all the that tier of players, Melvin Gordon, Frank Gore, all those yeah. guys down there, Latavius Murray, I'm, I'm certainly going to play over Mostert guys. over them. All right, the Kansas City Chiefs at 9-1 and one take on the 7-4 and four Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This game's interesting because of just how schizophrenic Tampa Bay seems to be. The Chiefs are three-and-a-half-point favorites. It's not a lot. It's a 56-point over-under. It, it doesn't. It's not super complicated on the Kansas City side. You play Mahomes, you play you can play Clyde with maybe uh like running back two flex type mm -hmm. of thoughts, Tyreek Hill every week. I mean I, I guess it's the the question becomes do you is there a second wide receiver you're willing to play because Byron Pringle kind of took the lunch money of McCole Hardman this past week and was the more featured uh wide receiver. But Byron Pringle has been placed on the IR, so he is out. Sammy Watkins, I believe, is eligible to come back. Oh, that is. But everyone thought he was back last week, and they're like, no, we don't want you. Yeah, because they had they had Byron Pringle. Right. But they don't have Pringle anymore. That should answer your question. <laughs> yeah, and, and even Demarcus Robinson, who, look, he got eight targets last week. I mean, you can't ask for much more than that. This is not a secondary option, by the way. No, this is a uh, this is the third or fourth option for the team. They are optimistic that Sammy Watkins will be back. No, I th this I th week. I think I think Andy's right. This is the easiest offense out there to say what you do with fantasy because there's no nuance. If you have Mahomes, you always start him. If you have Tyreek, you always start him. If you have Kelsey, you always start him. If you have I, the the only nuance is Clyde edwards alaire who you're probably going to start in, in almost every situation. So yeah, and then you move on. Uh, Tom Brady. Uh, I don't know, Jay. Are you playing Tom Brady? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think okay. I think Tom Brady's okay. I mean, it, it's I w I worry about Chris Jones um, because of that that center pressure up the pocket has been hurting. But remember, right I just, up the pocket. I I I, I just a new one. I just brought it up. Um, you know, when I was talking about Matt Ryan, the fact that he he was downright horrific against the Saints. The following week, he was the quarterback one. He has the weapons. He can get it done. Um, we saw this worry before the game against the Rams. We knew he was going to not be a great fantasy option. 
I think with the Chiefs here and a, a high-scoring affair, I think Tom Brady can get it done. He's fine. I'm not saying he's a must-start. I've got Brady and Josh Allen. I'm not going to start Brady. Just to reflect on your Monday thoughts on Brady and when he's bad and when he's good, th this pass rush has not been good for the Chiefs. It's, it's underperforming, Chris Jones included. Uh, the big contract, but not getting as much pressure, um, as you said, up the pocket. So I think Brady has an opportunity. Ronald Jones is annoying. So annoying. <laughs> because, you know, I had leagues where I had him on the bench during the breakout game, and then I'm like, oh, I got to get him back in so I don't miss points. And he does nothing last week. He will have every opportunity to get it going, but if they it, – it just gets complicated in this one. And I would probably try to avoid him because you're, you're underdogs – and we know who the Nickelback is. Look at his back. It's Leonard Fournette. Even though he can't catch the ball. he You know who he reminded me of this game? Ronald Jones. Ronald Jones. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how frustrated are you if you're, if you're Tom Brady? When these guys are running onto the field, I have to believe that Bruce Arians st grabs him by the, the jersey, looks him in the eye and says, whatever you do, don't drop a pass. And then they go out there with that in their head, and they can't catch the football. Any chance that they start working Keyshawn Vaughn in uh, as no, they get ready for the no, playoffs? I don't know. I, don't I mean, so. it, I, it would it would make sense if you're really, really frustrated. But He's the best got, pass catching running back on the team. Yeah, because you've got two other guys that are bad pass catching <laughs> backs. But um, I, I think they want the veterans in there. Well, I think I, they want the pass protection for Brady with the offensive is. line. They, if they bring in a rookie who – also whiffs on something and Brady gets hurt, it's just not worth the risk because he can catch the ball. Be Sorry, Jason. Uh, to, to just finish the thought on Ronald Jones and echo what Andy said, this is a game you project to lose against Kansas City Chiefs. When you look at Ronald Jones and you say, okay, well, how when has he been scoring? It's in the wins. It's pretty, pretty simple. He's literally scoring double the fantasy points in games they win, 14 versus 7 in the games they lose. I expect them to lose this game, so it's not a Ronald Jones game. Yeah, and just to echo your point on the pass protection, the offense isn't built to throw the ball to the running back. They want a running back they can toss it to even in an emergency, but they just need somebody to block for Tom Brady, and that's Ben Fournette. Evans, Godwin, Brown, put them in order in this game. Brown, Evans, Godwin. You're putting Brown one. I just think the targets are there for Brown. He, he is – seemingly the the number one target it's close it's not like he's the mm -hmm. one and you know everyone else's fodder uh but he's the one and unlike godwin uh, they're both used as possession guys but every game antonio brown's getting a deep shot or two and they haven't connected yet but i mean the, the they it's should coming. connect at some yeah. point bears at five and five uh by the way rob gronkowski you can you can start him you can it it was a dud last week yeah but, but that was tom brady and that was tight end. Chicago Bears, five and five, taking on the Green Bay Packers, who are seven and three. And the Packers are eight and a half point favorites in this one. It's a forty five point over under. Is it gonna be Nick Foles? Is it gonna be Mitch Trubisky? I don't know. Is it gonna be David Montgomery? I think that's the real well, he, question. Well, he is out of the concussion protocol. Oh, fantastic. So, so it is gonna be David It is Montgomery. likely going to be David Montgomery. Would you play David Montgomery yes. fresh off of the concussion protocol? Yes, 100%. Now, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay, I know well, I know why you're answering the way you're answering, and that is you're looking across the field. Mm -hmm. And you're saying, well, the Packers, they just give up a ton of points. Yes. Yes, we've talked about this, mm -hmm. Jason. Let me look at you in the eyes. Okay. David Montgomery doesn't take advantage of matchups. Exactly. He will have no quarterback. Yep. He doesn't take advantage of good matchups. That's right. Why are you playing him in this game? Because he's an RB2. He's always an RB2. He does, it, the matchup yeah, can, but can be pretty much irrelevant. I mean – He's going to be somewhere in the – he's going to get the volume, and the, he won't take advantage of the matchup in the sense that he's not going to run for five a carry and have this big 120-yard game and two touchdowns like you should have against Packers. But it is still an, a, a weaker running opponent, which with the volume, I think he will end where Kalen he Balazs. always ends. Kalen Balazs or, or I would go, David I would go Balazs because Balazs has the upside that I don't think Montgomery has. Okay. But they both, uh, to me, Raheem are, are, Mostert, if he's active, or David Montgomery. Oh, that's, that's a, a great question. perfect one. I would go David Montgomery. Though. I would go David Montgomery. David Montgomery or, I don't know, Antonio Brown. <laughs> um, oh, that's actually super interesting. David Montgomery or Antonio Brown, a half-point PPR in the flex. Yeah, just hypothetically. I would probably take Antonio Brown. I would outside. take Antonio Brown. 
All right, uh, Allen Robinson. I have my fears for him in this game. Jair Alexander, a Packers defense that is stout against wide receivers, and Allen Robinson that is probably good for six, seven, eight receptions, but is that going to be 42 yards, no touchdown? That's the yeah. concern for me. Uh, I am I am choosing Antonio Brown over Allen Robinson this week right now. I am just hesitant with the upside in this specific matchup on Sunday Night Football. I'll tell, I will throw out uh, the, the latest reports I had seen uh, specific to the quarterback. Nick Foles is, is, eat, uh, is beat up. He has the, the hip pointer type of injury where he's still in pain. Trubisky is is ready to practice. I, I lean that it's going to be uh, Mitch Trubisky back under center. Wow. I don't know what I want to happen. <laughs> it is it is a grass is greener permanence there in Chicago where whatever quarterback's in, I'm like, boy, if they could just get that other quarterback in, maybe Allen Robinson could get to do what he wants to do. Breaking news. Well, the NFL is postponing tomorrow night's Ravens-Steelers game. Uh, that will not happen. So there are only two Thursday night games. We do not have the details on when it is postponed to. It's to Sunday. We do have the details. Yes. But what time of the day, Andy? <laughs> <laughs> is it a morning game, afternoon? <laughs> yeah. Uh, See? Well, it does, make, uh, it does make sense to move it to Sunday. And hopefully we get we get a game. Uh, okay, that's big news. Remember back at the beginning of the uh, Megala, Megalodon? Yeah, that was a long time I ago. We didn't know. I can't remember that. We didn't far. know about that. No. We we have a uh, we have a clock in the studio that helps us see how long the show has been and mm -hmm. where we're at. It's it's dead. It's gone. <laughs> yeah. No, I ran out of time. Yeah. Uh, no time left. So Robinson is kind of a. Uh, a yes, floor you can, play at you can play wide him, receiver. Though. Yes. Otherwise, the other side of the ball, Rodgers, Jones, Adams, even though the matchup's difficult, it doesn't change whether you play them. They're all in your lineup. Yes. And Alan I, Lazard. No, I'm I, Tunyon, not yet. Not yet. Yes. Tunyon is what I wanted to point out. Mm. I think that this is a, a good matchup. You've got a great offense here in the Packers and a great defense here in the Bears. And where you, the Bears have been the most vulnerable, the weakest is at the tight end position. I think Aaron Rodgers will find that and exploit that. So when you're looking at all of the mid to crap level tight ends out there, then you're saying, which one do I stream? I would pick Tunyon as w one of the better options this week. All right. When you're sifting through the toilet, which you which turn do you sifting want? through the toilet? At, well, yeah, I mean, think about it. You're going it's like for panning gold. for gold. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh. Why do we both think oh, that? No. All right, that's gross. Uh, see, <laughs> and yet reminding me of a story that Mike told long ago. Oh, I've I have so many poop stories. I don't know about which one. your kids and a. Oh, a, yeah, a yeah, yeah. Grated drain. Yeah, and, where I had to cheese grate the turf. All right, Seattle oh. Seahawks at seven and three. Taking on the three, six, and one Philadelphia Eagles. Seahawks are five and a half point favorites, 51 point over under. Uh, this is a wild card matchup last year where Seattle beat uh, the Eagles 17 to nine, where Wentz left early, if you remember that game. Uh, Seattle's going to win this football game. They should. Russell Wilson, yeah, you play him. Metcalf Lockett always. But Chris Carson. Yeah, oh. all right. Chris, Chris Carson. Carson is going to play football this week. Are we excited about that? Yes, we are. I am super excited about that. He will be started. What about the tight end position? Greg Olson is out for the year. Oh, big Montana. Wheel Nisley. Jason's still got the energy at the end. It's, it's the music, honestly. That I'm is. so happy you played this. I'm ready to go for another two hours. I got to... I gotta oh. turn it off, don't I? <laughs> uh, you do. Uh, I will say this: I just I checked the schedule. This song. I don't think Andy knows how to turn this off. I don't. <laughs> oh, there, there it is. <laughs> I was on the wrong screen. I'm yeah. like, I can't stop it. Unfortunately, uh, you know, due to a global pandemic, uh, Disneyland is not open right okay. now. Okay, so I agree. you cannot I agree. start Disney. Miles Sanders, uh, Seattle's been stout against the run. Third fewest rushing yards per game, second lowest yards before contact, but you were it's, boxed in. It's uh, actually part of 
it's actually part of why Seattle is so beat through the air and everyone is running on them is they're actually good against the run and bad. It's a funnel defense. So it's one of those things where that gives more credence to Carson Wentz should have a good game, should need to throw the ball if the running game isn't working and the passing game is easily working. Here's news. Eagles head coach Doug Peterson said Zach Ertz is trending in the right direction to play this week. How does that make you feel, Mike? Uh, it, it, do the Eagles want to win? Like, Zach now, Ertz? What if it's a Carson Wentz problem yeah, well, and not a Zach Ertz problem? I, it could. What it, if it was why a, not both? <laughs> Zach Ertz or uh, if he's active or Dal Dalton Schultz? Zach Ertz. Dalton Schultz. I have a policy. This is, this is, this I is, have a policy. This is interesting. We're right now on waivers. If, if, Zach I mean, Ertz or Noah Fant in a horrible Noah matchup. Fant. I'm I think probably, it's Ertz. I'd probably go Noah Fant. But uh, the, it's, a, it's a name at least worth – I at this point – You can pick him up. You can pick sure. him up off of waivers, see what you got. I mean, if you're, if you're sifted through the toilet, Ertz is in there. Gross. Gross end of the show. Uh, Travis Fulgham, Jalen Rager, Alshon Jeffrey – not Alshon. Alshon um, is, uh, I mean, he's he, on the field. Yeah, but sometimes he, he shouldn't be. He's sometimes had three targets in two games, which have resulted in zero catches. So yeah, no, you, you don't play him. Uh, I mean, Fulgham, it's been really, really bad for him the past couple of weeks. And last week against Cleveland, the the weather was insane. There was still seven targets for Travis Fulgham. The week before that was the Giants, and the Giants have a good secondary, including the uh, coverage from James Bradbury, which was five targets that only turned into one reception. I I hate to continually be the the Travis Fulgham truth apologist. Yeah, apologist over here, but I think you can play him as a wide receiver three with upside. I am finding another option. But I, I agree that it's possible. I'm just not excited, which yeah. is how I approach Carson Wentz anymore. I will possible, say, but I'm not, not excited. Not excited. I, I will say this for this entire week's slate of weather. Obviously, we've got to record this very early, so we we can't give you as good information as we usually can on a Friday. But the weather appears good across the board for virtually every single game. The only one that might have bad weather is actually this one. So you know, uh, you check it closer to the time but obviously the rain didn't help Carson Wentz last week yeah all right moving on prop it like it's hot presented by monkey knife fight slight update Jason. yeah yeah Raven Steelers Sunday afternoon oh well, now we have the information yes thank you for letting me know you're welcome <laughs> all right <laughs> prop it like it's hot our favorite week 12 props on monkey knife fight which you can play with us, ballerspicks.com. Use the code BALLERS for a 100% deposit match up to $50, ballerspicks.com. My pick this week, James White, more than 10.5 fantasy points. Oh, oh, And that's full PPR. Man, in my head, I heard James Washington, and I was like, what are you doing? No, no. <laughs> James White, it's PPR scoring. All right. Ten point five okay. fantasy points. He is too essential to this offense at that point. At this point in time, with Burkhead out, he had eleven and a half, uh, eleven and a half last week in a half point. So uh, the snap share for Rex Burkhead was thirty forty percent. He's too necessary. And in a full PPR, ten and a half is not a, a, a tough line to hit against an Arizona offense that should score. Yeah, yeah, that that could certainly happen in a in a full PPR league. Uh, that's that's great. I would I would just say this. This Ballers Picks thing we've been doing this year has been a lot of fun, and if you're getting together with people that maybe don't know about it, get them involved. Mm -hmm. uh, have them go to BallersPicks.com, use the code BALLERS, and play these with us. Um, I'm going with Stefan Diggs. Stefan Diggs, he has a line of 85 and a half receiving That's yards. That's a lot. That's, That's a lot. And I'm saying more's coming, baby. I'm going over that because he's averaging more than 85 and a half yards per game. He's averaging 90 yards per game right now. He actually has had more than 85 and a half in seven of his games already this year. And now you got a 54 and a half point over under in a high, uh, you know, in, in what projects to be a high scoring game. I, I, I love, I love digs in every way. And so I will, I will 
say he's going to have a great game. All right. I want to talk about Rule 86. Well, the former Rule 86, Jordan Reed, more than five, or three and a half receptions, or more or less, I should say. I, I guess I spoiled it because I'm taking the more. We've seen Jordan Reed essentially twice in that starter role where he's replacing George Kittle. Both of those times he has surpassed the three and a half receptions. Seven in week two, five in week ten. Looks like Jordan Reed is healthy, and George Kittle will not be on the field. So I will take more than three and a half receptions. All right. I think that line is is a good one, and I am curious to see what happens. Ballerspicks.com is the web address if you want to play with us. If you got to this point in the show, this is the end, gentlemen. Oh. If you finish the Megalodon, please let us know on Twitter, at the FF Ballers, and use the hashtag Megadun. Megadun, <laughs> that's right. Because you're mega done with this episode, and we yeah. are going to give a lucky winner a $100 gift card. That's right. And to of, course, .com. of course, if you listen to the whole episode, you know the real uh, hashtag to use, maybe. Or is it mega done? You know, know whether yeah. we said another hashtag in the, in the halfway he's, he's point trying, of the show. Do you think our listeners are cheaters, Jason? I don't think they're cheaters. I don't think I don't they think take so credit either. for stuff that they don't want. Except for Taysom Hill fantasy points I, in the tight end slot. <laughs> yeah, baby. I think they're Hashtag mega done. I think they're winners. Stay safe, everybody. Enjoy the holiday. I will see you on Sunday. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.